it. Turn off that. And I guess we need to do our city event first. With that scenario, huh? All right. Let's so be unlocked. City scenario. All right. And I guess we have a road event to do as well. This is oops. one of those. Ooh, wow! I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. All right. Sometimes I, I know that I chose taken a choice before. But I don't actually know the two outcomes because maybe I never did the other outcome or something like that, or I just don't remember exactly what's going to happen if I choose one of the outcomes. So I remember that I should choose the outcome because it's I was happy with it or whatever. But uh, yeah, this was not not such a great outcome for what's going to be a very difficult scenario. All right, so we gain ten collective gold, and we have to discard two cards each. We also unlocked another scenario, so we unlocked two scenarios total here. So we're going to put the 10 gold on the Brute, because like I said, he's the one who really can still get enhancement. Although I guess he's close, to maybe going to retire soon as well. We'll see. Hmm, that's an interesting point. No, I think it's still fine to do it like that. All right. So let's see what we can read. Ah, oh, so there's a, let's get all the stuff out actually. A lot of stuff for the scenario. B two B M one A D one A D two A C one A C two B. They're going to all pop up in there in just a second here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, disaster. Oh, TTS. Not like this. All right. Well, I got to gotta restart TTS because it just crashed. Uh, the autosave should be recent enough. So at least there's that. I mean, I've been sitting around for a little bit. Unfortunately, this is going to take me now two more minutes to load up because scenarios do not load quickly on my laptop. Or not scenarios, but um, TTS. Gloomhaven, I guess is what I should say. It's just a ton of stuff to load. Uh, oh, no! No! Oh, crap. Uh, I'm so sorry. Well, it's going to be a bit longer. Can we just exit while it's loading? Yes, we can. I accidentally, I just, it was just um, mechanical, so I started loading my save, but I don't actually have, I, this is actually the first time I've ever had Gloom TTS crash on me, so I wasn't really prepared for this, but it's possible I should be saving a little bit more often. And then I just mechanically loaded up my actual save file, not the autosave, but obviously the save file has, uh, isn't, I mean, it was at the beginning of today. All right, so we have to load the autosave, which can take at least a minute. I can check Reddit. Check the subreddit while I wait. Guess there's nothing really in chat. And yeah, there will be some cultists for us to kill, which is definitely good. Yeah, looks like we're almost loaded in. So we have the book. Had we done? Have we added scenario 82? We have. 
Did we add the gold? We did. All right. So I guess we were just missing doing this. All right. Easy enough. So let's try again. Maybe without the crashing. So B2B. M1A. This one that caused us to crash, I wonder? This one does seem to be struggling to load. Okay, looks like we're good. Oof. Uh, we need a, a boulder. All right. So, what do we have here? This like this. All right, lock them up. So there are a bunch of doors everywhere. We're going to need some under doors as well. So while we're setting this up, uh, uh, I guess the problem is this, this can create spoilers for people in the VODs. Yeah, never mind. I was going to ask people, because I finally just got, I finally finished watching season three of Daredevil, which I enjoyed. Um, so I would have been interested in talking about that, but I realized it's not a good idea because while well, anyone who's watching in chat can avoid it, the people who watch the VODs can't avoid potential spoilers for those who have not watched it yet. Yeah, just trying to do something to, to talk about what we waited. But no, well, anyway, I enjoyed it. I guess in chat, if anyone else watched it, you're welcome to respond. Let me know what you thought. I'll just avoid talking about spoilers so as to not ruin it for people in the VOD. I uh, I watched it this past weekend because Jessica, my fiance, was out of town, and I know she doesn't. She's just not really interested in watching it with me, even though we typically watch things on Netflix together. So that's why I took the opportunity to binge watch it over the entire weekend. I binge watched the entire series over the weekend, which was worth the time. All right. So in the first room, we have one regular, one elite cultist. Cultists are kind of an annoying thing to have to kill for the quest. Bandits are very easy. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them early in the campaign. They're not too difficult. Cultists are a little bit different, though, because they can be so punishing with everything they can do. 15 and 25 health. Because of the possibility of summoning. Also, because if you try to you know leave them around for too long and they do a death explode the turn you kill them, this can be annoying as well. So you just have a lot less, a lot less flexibility in how you try to kill them. All right, so there's one treasure tile and four altars. We place the altars immediately. Um, Daredevil. Season three of that. So we don't have any special rules yet, but we know that the goal is to destroy all altars. Interesting. So we have to place the altars, but we don't understand anything about them. All right. Fair enough. Stuff like this. All right, so I guess that's the setup. So there's nothing else. There are no negative special effects. No, nope, nothing like that. Just the whatever's the altars. All right. So, what should we bring? I think our... Oh, no, yeah, we don't need that summon anymore. Where are you? Not for this. So, I think we'll go back to Elemental Aid, which can be fine here as a heal between rooms. Hey, Themris, it's been a while. How are you? 
So there are no traps, so Crater is man, Sable of Evil, similarly meh. Yeah, but this is fine like this. Is there anything we don't want though? No, we want this, definitely want this. All these things are good. Backup ammo, huh? No, getting backup ammo set up before we go into the main room could be actually quite useful. Oh, that's a long scenario. Is that good to have it? Yeah, I think it's fine. It's fine to play a loss. I mean, one loss for the room, which is going to be the difficulty spike. Been on a business trip for the last two weeks. Oh, where were you on a business trip too? Sentient growth is kind of meh here. Facing a bunch of elementals, as well as cultists, which have way too much health. Eh, it's still decent against the cultists, I suppose. Yeah, I think all this stuff is fine. I mean, none of this stuff is really that much better. We could consider replacing Sending Growth with Unsaved Law People just for a better initiative. I don't think it changed much. The Azores. I don't... Time to go to Google. Oh, in Portugal. Interesting. Cool. All right. Uh, no, I think that deck is fine. So we do want Trample here because we've got multiple shielded enemies. Uh, yeah, none of this stuff really matters much. So I think all that is fine. I guess the 10 initiative is an interesting breakpoint against cultists. We kind of just need all our cards. They're just all too good, except for Trample, which is just necessary with all these shield enemies. And yeah, all right, all the decks look fine. We've already done a set event, road event as well, so let's just go ahead and grab the battle goals. Oops, tablet went to sleep. Take only long rests, gain seven or fewer experience. We can try to take only long rests, so it's unlikely to happen. Very unlikely to happen. I mean, whatever. We don't get a check mark. We don't get a check mark. We're three away from a perk here. The Cryograph's the one we really want to get one on, actually, because one check mark gets him a perk. Overkill a monster by four more, or have one or more monsters always present. Mm, I guess we'll try to overkill a monster by four or more, because we're definitely not going with one or more monsters always present. Oops. We should be donating with all this extra gold we have. That's silly. Though, at some point, I don't really want Prosperity either, so, meh. Alright, uh, kill three or fewer monsters during the scenario, or loot a treasure tile. There is a treasure tile. I believe this treasure tile is a trap, however. You want to do some class testing on Sunday? Let me look at what Sunday is today. I do really want to do class testing, there's no doubt about that. Problem is, I think, yeah, yeah, I could do that. So Sunday is the last day of the Kuala Lumpur Major, which I want to watch, but it'll actually be in the morning here, so that doesn't really change anything. Yeah, at 9 a.m. CET, that's when it starts. So yeah, 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 if we start uh, at the usual time of like 4 p.m., 3 or 4 p.m., I guess like 4 p.m. That'll be fine. Yeah, just let me know. Assuming your flights don't get delayed, I would be happy to do it like at the typical 4, 4 o'clock my time. But it, Or we can even do it a little bit later if you need to. All right. Um, yeah, we're, we're not going to try to kill three or fewer monsters because we really want to kill these cultists. So we'll try to loot a treasure tile. Yeah, I may need to do a little bit of updates. I'm not sure. All right. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get to this scenario. So we get to start back here. Might as well drop rocks. No reason not to. So the dropping rocks doesn't help if they decide to summon, but if they decide to summon, there's actually it does help even if they decide to summon. Because so we can go rock, 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 and then have the brute and then move up to here or something. And then they won't actually, and we can block all their spaces so they can't even summon. Yeah. Yep, yep. Plus, it just, it does damage them, and it makes it so they can't attack us. Now, cultists don't hit very hard. Yeah, level 7. We're at plus 4 here. We are, uh... Well, we, we've done three scenarios in a row now on plus 3, and they've all been painfully easy. So we've decided to go up to plus 4. I don't think this one will be painfully easy. Uh, unfortunately, we can't beat their, we can never beat their 10.
we might as well save the strength in for next turn. Yeah, we'll just do this combo like we usually do. So, like I said, by doing this, we're going to limit the amount of spaces they can summon in, and we're going to make it so that we can choke point them just by making it so that only one of them... I guess the annoying thing is we can't actually... Well... Oh, yeah, no, if we go here and here, then the other one won't be able to move up. Yep, that's good. Oh, level 7 for the classes. Uh, Yeah, sure, level 7 sounds good. You'll finally get to use resistance. And I'll finally get to use... uh. Your overpowered level 6 double attack. Nah, I'm just kidding. I guess it previously was overpowered, but it's now been brought back in line. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so these enemies aren't that threatening in terms of their attacks, but they add curses, and this is going to be a long scenario, so I'd like to... Yes, we have emotes. So unfortunately, it can't. It couldn't be gripe null because of how Twitch auto does it. It had to be gripe unnull, which is a little bit of a shame, because everyone would have preferred gripe null, but yeah. Don't get too attached to that. Oh, you think that uh, Isaac isn't going to want... Am I going to have to get rid of that, is what you mean? Oh, you want... oh, I get what you're saying. I was a little bit scared. I was like, has Isaac said something about people not... Yeah, so Themris, to be clear, I I used... I mean, I used the null icon without... I should have probably asked Isaac. Yeah. But I didn't. Um. So, yeah. I guess I'm a little... <laughs> I don't think he would care so much, which is why I've only used the one thing, because there's also like the possibility of setting up sub-badges, but I didn't want to use any more things from the game, like any more actual assets. I figured using one was okay, but using more would be a little bit too borderline, so that's why we just have that one, the one emote now. But yeah, it's true. As ECO said, we haven't drawn many nulls, although here we're going to get some curses, so it's going to be a little bit different. Advantage isn't going to be quite so strong. All right. So... Time to create some elements. The usual starting plan. Yeah, I guess I should probably just ask him. Or just say something to him. I, I have not told him anything about it. I actually have to contact him for something else anyway. So I'm just going to do both things at the same time. I've just been waiting to have to do the, to contact him about the other thing. But I really should ask him about it. I mean, I... I should really go on that. I'll take care of that this week for sure. All right. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll have to replace it with something else, in which case it'll be more fitting for our future parties, which never get nulls anyway, right? Knock on wood. All right. Um, so we need the brute to jump into here to fill the other spot. Create wind. Set up a better skewer next turn, ideally. If they go at 10, it's kind of going to ruin all our plans, but uh, I think the upside is there. We still want to go pretty early so that we can get in there so they can't get out. Since we're going to have a 19 here, the 17 works well. All right, see you Sunday, Thimrus. But yeah, so basically, like, we can't beat the, the 10 of the cultists with either of our people. We could if we brought Provoking Roar, but it still wouldn't change much because they would still mess up what we're going to do with the rocks. So we're just going to hope to dodge the 10. And then the Brute's going to move to here. The Krygart's going to move to here. This makes it so only this one will be able to attack because this one won't be able to move at all. And if they summon, they won't be able to summon at all. We're basically preparing ourselves most for the summon. The 10 is unfortunate if they get it, but the summon is obviously the most threatening thing. And then from then on, we'll be quite fine. We still would prefer to go early because if they get some another one of their early Ur cards, which is not the 10, it would be better to have both of us go before. That way we do, again, prevent them from getting two people into a spot where they can attack our choke point. Oops. All right, 27. Perfect. This is why going at the 17 and 19 works out quite well. Yeah, hopefully. We usually stream on the weekends whenever we do the class testing because it's, uh, it's difficult for me to do any other days on the week. All right, we're going to do the bottom of Leaving Cleave to do a move four, creating wind, and jump down one, two, three to here. And, oh, we had to discard two cards. All right, uh, so we've got discard cards we're going to use here. Well, we didn't really care about sending growth to begin with, so we can go to that. And I guess Cataclysm is initiative. But we have some. We're going to get our card back anyway. Yeah, I guess we were like Cataclysm. We're not using that here. 
Um, Trample does nothing in this room. That's pretty easy to discard. We don't need that many big movements here, so this is fine. This for over here. The healing, we might... I mean, well, we might have thought that we would, want, would have wanted. I mean, we know we need these two. Oh, we brought fire orbs. We shouldn't have actually... I don't think we actually wanted to bring that. That was a mistake. Forgot to cut that. Fire orbs, definitely. Um, I guess we'll never be able to do the full Living Torch combo, but I guess Living Torch is still better than Flashing Burst. Now there's initiative to consider. I guess we do this next turn. Yeah, this plus this can actually be okay. All right, yeah, we'll get rid of Living Torch. That's fine. It's weird to keep this over this, but again, this gives us 26 initiative. This gives us 96. This gives us one attack higher and immobilize. <sighs> the immobilize can do something, but it doesn't really because it'll be immobilized at 84 initiative. So we have to kind of keep this for the 26. All right. This was a mistake. I was so focused on remembering battle goals every time that I actually forgot the effect that I got from the um, road event. It doesn't matter too much. I would have almost certainly always discarded these cards, and nothing that happened here had any effect on that. Okay, so we get an attack four, shield one self on the brute, attacking cultist number four. Okay, fair enough. So four damage down to 11. And that's it. So then the crack art goes. So we're going to gain one experience, create earth, and drop some rocks. So we're going to go rock, rock, rock. Perfect obstacle placement in TTS is a beautiful and challenging thing. Nah, that's good enough. So two damage there, and two damage there. We're immune to the rocky damage. All right. And then we have a move two at the bottom of Kinetic Assault, and we're just going to move to here. Again, this way the elite will never get to move up and attack anything. All right, so then the cultist goes, and so he makes an attack three curse, targeting the brute, because the brute had lower initiative. Oops, not over there. Here. All right, so the Brute has shield one, so an attack three does two damage, except I guess we have to use this no matter what. We'll hold on to this for now. So take one damage, although more significantly, we do take a curse. Oops. Oh yeah, let's just switch the deck side so we actually use the correct one, so. All right. And then the Spellweaver goes, so we're going to begin by using Engulf. We will attack. It doesn't really change anything if we try to kill... I guess it's better actually to do, yeah split damage because we have a lot of AOE. So we'll attack the elite. Because there's only ever going to be one attacking. Actually killing the elite first is better because the elite attacks for four, whereas the regular attacks for three. Um, so that's one argument, although we're not close to killing the elite first. But it's also just that both the Spellweaver and the Cracker and with Skewer the Brute all can do AOE that hit both. So in that case, I'd rather spread damage rather than kill this one right away. So we'll make an attack four targeting the elite with Engulf. We attack first because then if we... We create ice with a flip. We can create some other element, although here it never really matters, but sure. All right, attack four with engulf on the elite. All right, plus two, nice. So six, bring him down to 17. And then we're gonna do a move four jump. I guess we'll move just up to here. And we create ice. Turn around. Time for the combo. Ah, oh, we forgot to ham in a potion for the crack heart. Oh, that was a mistake. Uh, that was a mistake. Oh, well. All right. Well, we might as well use Heaving Swing plus Dirt Tornado here. Um, just because one extra damage is one extra damage. They're going to be stunned at seven, so it doesn't matter how early we go here. And the Cracker actually wants to go really late. I guess we can use Balance Measure. It's fine to just get rid of this, because we actually want to go after the Cracker so that there's a better chance that this one doesn't die, although it's most likely going to die anyway. No, it has 9 health, yeah. That way it's likely not to die from Dirt Tornado. This way we give them, the, they actually get the curse, because then we're going to skewer both of them anyway, so then it should die. Um, yeah. Let's go for all the seeds. Oh, but actually by staying here, we're going to have disadvantage on this one. Although I guess having disadvantage on this one is fine. We actually care more about getting the plus one damage on the elite. So if we do like minus one damage here, plus one damage here, this is fine. Because the Spellweaver does three to each. The Brute does four to each. So that's already seven here. So even if we only get two from the Dirt Tornado, that's still nine. Plus we have the one wound, so that's ten. And there's the advantage here. So yeah, we're easily looking to have enough on this. If we get a miss, then maybe we don't kill it. But in that case, we still have more AoE that we can do next turn. So I think it still makes sense to do this from where we are. Again, just basically, we're... You could even look at it as like subtracting one to add one here, which definitely makes sense for us, because we would rather prioritize more damage on the elite right away. Again, going after the Krykart 
with the brute in order to make sure that the cracker gets the curse or more likely to get the curse. And so we're going as early as possible to make sure that we get a stun. Let's go. Ah, trying to summon. It's a shame that we stun them for this because this actually just literally does nothing. Interesting. It does literally do nothing. Rather than take the damage. Okay. So, interestingly enough, we're going... Well, we're going to begin by using Mana Bolt on ourselves. We're not missing any health, but we get strengthened for two rounds. Boom. And we're going to use Cold Fire, and we're going to consume the fire with Cold Fire, but not the ice, because we actually don't want to stun them. Um, with the way we have the thing, everything set up right now, they cannot summon. Even if this dies, it'll drop a coin, so this still will not be able to summon. So, actually, by not stunning them, we're literally just dealing two more damage to them. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but that is actually how it works here. So we will, again, use Cold Fire just on the fire, not the ice. Doing an attack three with advantage, we'll do the elite and then the regular. So each of these is attack three advantage. Okay, so three damage. And we got a new ice and five damage. Unfortunately, that's not the way we should would have liked to distribute the damage. I mean, the higher damage one, but that's okay. Oops. Oh, down to four. All right, and so then we're done. When the Cryheart goes, we're going to use the bottom of Heaving Swing, adding plus one attack to all ranged attacks. We're going to consume Earth, gain one experience, which gives us an attack three, thanks to Heaving Swing, Muddle, Curse, with Dirt Tornado. We'll have a disadvantage attack against number four, and then a regular attack against number six. Obviously, we're shaping it like this so as to not muddle our allies. So first on number four, which is disadvantage. All right, don't mind that at all. So this ends up just doing one damage, putting him down to three. Giving him Muddle and Curse. Muddle I'm not going to bother with, because I'm not attacking this turn, but I will go ahead and just grab both of their Curses, because I'm sure, I mean, the Elite is never dying for our attack. All right, and then on the Elite, just a regular attack, plus one. So that ends up being four damage, putting him down to ten, and again, Muddle and Curse. The Muddle doesn't matter, and the Curse we've already shuffled into their deck. Okay, and so then we're done. Then the Brute goes, so we're going to use Skewer. We're going to gain one experience, Oops, consume the wind. This gives us an attack, four, wound, pierce one. Pierce doesn't really matter. We'll do closest to furthest, so four and then six. Okay. Okay. So what are our battle calls again? Take along long rests, overkill, loot a treasure tile. It's a shame, actually, that the, or the Brute gets the skill, because we do want to leave Cultists for the spell over a little bit. We're also playing on plus four, so I'm not really going to prioritize being like greedy. All right, so then our four gets doubled on the Elite to an eight. Oops, so he's actually just going to... Oop, nah. Misclick there. And the Wound. Yeah, four, double to eight, and Wound, so he's actually just going to suicide. Oh, no, I'm an idiot. The Cultist went before the Brute. So, well, this one would have been at one life, and this one would actually just die to this attack now. Yeah, for some reason. So, I guess, well, if I'd known I would get the crit, maybe I should have preferred to stun him so that he wouldn't take the two damage. And then I could have actually finished him with the Spellweaver, but so be it. Oh, and so then we've got to move, and I guess we'll move and grab a coin. Okay. So, definitely want to do some setup before going into this room. This is the reason we brought back up ammo. Guess we don't really need to move with E. Cragheart. The spell we can move. So, we do something like that. We can just use our bottom heal then, since we don't need to move. It just gives one health to the brute, but I mean, you never know when that one health could matter. So, what is the brute going to do when he enters the room? Well, we got rid of balance measure, so I guess we're going to do kind of like move with this plus ranged attack, or just move with this plus attack four. It's probably safer. I mean, probably a pretty safe bet, right? Uh, to here? That actually allows us to attack half the room. Yeah, that should be safe. I mean, we can use boots, worst case scenario. So yeah, we'll, we'll actually go with these two cards, I guess, for entering. Which means we'll just play these as throwaways now. Okay, this looks fine. Mm -hmm. So, Spellweavers first. Uh, 
who do we need closest? Oh yeah, so no, we, we can move up next to the room or what. Grab this coin. Put them there. I guess we can do the, be the one to heal. Actually, it wasn't necessary to use the bottom heal then. Oh well, I don't really care about that card so much. The question is, should we actually try to use our double potion now to be able to go in with cold fire? In case they summon the first turn. Hmm. It's a fair question. Yeah, I guess we probably should, to be perfectly honest. So we'll use one of our potions to create ice. So we're done. Then the brute goes. Uh, the brute's gonna stay exactly where he is, not do anything. The Cragheart can uh, no point in moving up. We can do a generic move to get this back so that we can Hamana, but we won't actually have a good action. So this turn we'll I mean the coming turn we're gonna move in with blunt force and plus use massive boulder. It's only a move two, which kind of sucks, but we have our boots, so we can go up to four, and then we have three range, one, two, three. So we get most of the room. That puts us pretty safe. Um, so I think that's fine. So this combo looks good for us next turn, which means we don't really want to Hamana because then we would be playing this plus this. So yeah, we're gonna we are gonna activate backup ammo though. We are hemorrhaging a bit of longevity here. There's no doubt about it. And we have a bottom heal that just does nothing. Okay. So spell we rest do short rest, unfortunately. I mean, would I choose to lose the Living Torch? No, certainly not. Will I be fine with losing, losing Living Torch and getting to keep my full Cold Fire combo? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Oops, sorry. Uh, the this, uh, this, Obviously, if I was creating one of the elements, I was creating the other element. Okay, um, so we're going to go in with this. Plus, I guess, this for enough movement. Yeah, seems fine. And then we can try to do a follow-up combo to set up a cold fire after that. If we had access to real stamina potions, what we would typically do in a situation like this would actually be to like move in with Reviving Ether plus this, try to get one of the elements off of the, the flips on cold fire and the other one, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of difficult, but we would just want a stamina potion back cold fire and then do cold fire immediately the following turn as well. But since we don't have real stamina potions, we cannot do that. Just showing you how you could theoretically do this if you're playing regular Gloomhaven. Broken, broken Haven, as we'll call it. All right. So you're going in at 42, and you're going in at 21. All right, this looks good. So the Cryguard will be opening a door. That doesn't really matter too much. I think we're afraid of a 63, and the spell we were still well before that. But 67 is not, so yeah. All right, let's go. So Cryguard first. Gain one experience. Do a move to retaliate oneself. Gain one experience. Strengthen self. So let's throw that strength in on and move on to the door. So we've got the chest here. I believe this chest is a trap, but I'm not 100%. We're obviously going to grab it. But this is what I'm talking about when a chest is too easy. If a chest is just sitting in the center of the room like this, just like really easy to grab, this is what makes me suspicious that it's a trap. Elite. So we really do not want to see summon this turn, but if it is, it is. At least we're prepared. Because, we, yeah, we won't be able to hit. Oh, their spacing is annoying. We're only going to be able to hit one of them with cold fire. Yeah, so summon here would be bad. All right. Oh, that's still, it's a shame that we're not after them, actually, now. Because, yeah, we're not. I guess we have the compass. Yeah, we're going to have to use the compass. Oh, well. Um. So from here, we don't have enough range. So we do need to move up more. Might as well move up the full thing. So we'll use our boots to get two more movement. One, two, like so. Yeah, this was the correct spacing, right? Yeah. A little annoying setup there that you've got. Not wanting to be AoE'd at all. Uh, yeah, because they're always going to get to hit us. Change nothing. We'll save the stun powder because we could use that on our turn when they might theoretically summon, which could be a big difference. Also, theoretically later against elite wind demons or something. So we create earth, 
using backup ammo, or sorry, massive boulder, which uses a charge of backup ammo. So this gives us two attack threes with advantage, and we can only attack the two. So we'll do one and six in order. Lowest highest. So one, so four damage, and then six, five damage. Pretty reasonable. So 15 health. So this one has 11. This one has 10. And this one has still the full 25. Uh, you're right that the elite can't hit me if I stay one further. This would have been worth paying attention to because he does have only three movement. Hmm. But, um, yeah. Unfortunately, I've already flipped. I should have paid more attention to that. I don't know why I didn't. I could now compass him away, but the purpose of the compass is obviously to use on... Yeah, that was just a mistake. I wasn't paying enough attention to everything. Oh, the compass is from the Brute. Oh, I'm not even going to be able to use the compass. Oh, I forgot that the Brute had it. I thought the Kragheart had it. Oh, this is awful. Yeah, we've made a lot of mistakes here. Okay, so what well, we're going to do is move forward with Flashing Burst. Two... Or and just hit the elite since it gets to hit us now anyway. Yeah, it would have been better to stay one further back. <sighs> Their arrangement is just so annoying. Or do I want him to move up? Even if he is going to hit me. Just here. And create some like obstacles to encase them so they can't summon. Is that the plan at this point? I wonder. So let's see. Right now, this will go here, which is fine because we do one, two, three, four, and we get double attack on this. Otherwise, we can move more, but we don't really need to. So, yeah, double attack on this and attack four plus an attack five on this should kill this. So we can leave that one as is for sure. So the question is whether we should stun this one or stun the elite. I mean, we should just stun the elite because it attacks for one more. The only thing is we're putting damage on the one we're less likely to kill. But I think this is still correct. We should have, for sure, though, should have stopped here. Mm. I guess that then the downside is then this would have gone to here. We would get one less attack. Well, I guess the biggest issue with if we... No, I guess if we went here, this would go here, yeah. And then we would just get one less attack on this, but that's still certainly worth it for taking one less attack for curse. All right, uh, so we'll stop here with the Spellweaver, and with Cold Fire, we'll go one, two, three, and expand down here, hitting the Elite. We should have stayed one further back. It was definitely worth it. This was a mistake. Just wasn't paying enough attention. All right, consume the two elements. Do an attack three um, on the Elite. I'm not going to use the Goggles here, even though I normally have Strength in any way. Um... I'd rather use it when I at least hit two targets with something. So, cold fire, just starting the elite, attack three, is done. All right. 22, and it's done. This turn did not work out very well, though. All right, so this will go here and attack the Kragar. This will go here and attack the Kragar because of initiative. This will lose its done. So each of these will be an attack three curse on the Kragar. So two damage, take it. We'll get the curses afterwards. Um, and then five damage, actually. They each take one damage from the Retaliate. That's why we wanted to move up. <laughs> it doesn't, still doesn't make any sense. And two curses to the Kragart. Two damage there. No doubt about it. And then the Brute goes. So we got to move four. If we move in a straight line, we get an attack four. One, two, three, four to there. Get an attack four on number six. Five, nice. Just have to dodge a bad draw here. So down to four, and then we gain one experience. We use the top of Unstoppable Charge to make another attack five. Come on, be kind. Oh, that's not what I want to see. All right. Good. Got the kill on the cultist. So 
So what's our plan now? Mm, Garkar needs to go a short rest. Oh no, that's uh, that's scary. Cause I want to do something really good. Oh God! Oh, this scenario. <laughs> All right, things just got a lot more serious. Those are our two best cards back to back. Man, I mean, Rock Slide is the card he can never really lose, and then that isn't normally, but with the strength, and it really is. It's actually a better card, I would say, than Dirt Tornado for us, especially for this scenario. Yeah. I agree, Long Rest in the Middle of Cultist would definitely have been a good plan. I mean, in hindsight, if I'd known that I had to lose that, it might have been. Not really, though. Yeah, we'll lose the Supple Charge, it's fine. It's not great, so one of our best attacks, but. Not gonna re-roll out of that. We've got Mobile Phalanx, we've got um, Skewer, Leaping Cleave combo, which is so good. All right, uh, so what to do now? We wanna try to prevent them from summoning. Is there any easy way to do this? We can surround this one with rocks. I guess we should almost always play Rock Slide here no matter what. We have another turn of strength then. But I guess that's not really where we wanna be at. Yeah, I think we should drop rocks. This can at least, I mean, if we go, if they end up flipping summon and we go rock, 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 I guess we have to move to do this, then this stops one of the two summons. We won't be able to stop this one. We might even be able to kill it with the other two people. And I mean, like doing the three rocks, it's basically the same as doing two damage to the elite and killing a skeleton, right? Like doing 13 damage as well. That's absolutely worth it. Even if it feels kind of bad to do it like this. And if they end up flipping a non- summon then i mean it's worse but we just you know do two damage to each of the cultists which is mediocre but acceptable uh, i think we'll just use this again for generic move and we'll definitely ham on a potion in here because we have an odd number okay so accordingly what should the spell we were do I need to move away to lose disadvantage, I guess. So I suppose we can just use like this to move away, plus this to attack. There's an Earth, which I guess he's not using, but I would rather use this for the bottom, typically, anyway. No, because we want to save Engulf, I suppose, for when we can do this. So we want to spend one turn not engulfing. So I guess we actually can just do... We could do an Elemental Aid to give an Ally Shield, too. This could be interesting as well. The downside is then we have disadvantage, but maybe that's worth it. The cry card goes early, but I guess the cry card's not going to be the one getting attacked by this. We will. No, so that seems bad. So let's just move away and attack it, I guess. I mean, attack three feels pretty medium, but no. That's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. So how close are we to actually being able to kill this one then? If it takes two damage, no, it doesn't take two damage from a rock typically. So this one has ten life. We do three, so this puts it to seven. So we need to do around seven damage with the cracker or the brute. We could do attack three, attack three. I mean, with three attack threes and our modifier decks at this point, we should typically get ten. But we cannot. We also do have some curses, although two of the three curses are on someone who's not attack. I mean, not a person who's actually attacking here. Otherwise, we can do a one and a four. Doing this and this. No, I think it's better just to do two range attacks, I guess. Alright, yeah, let's just do this. I think this is fine. I mean, this is six. I don't think we can do better than six here. I mean, we could theoretically with balance measure meet six by using our boots, but that doesn't seem really any better. Ah, the pull. That's an interesting idea. Oh, if we pull the elite... And we go rock, rock, rock. That's an that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. I I kind of just forget that the pull can actually do anything. But you're right. So we would have to pull it to here, which means we'd have to move first. This is so much worse if they don't summon. 
I think I think it's all right. The problem is, so if we do this, we would need to do some sort of move because if we pull this to here, it doesn't work. Yeah, because there's still two. Even if we go, yeah, yeah. so we'd have to pull him to here, or I guess theoretically here. If we like move, someone moves there, this would work. Um, but yeah, so if we have to pull him to here. We have or here. I mean, one of these two. We have to move no matter what. If we have to move, this means basically our plan is only going to be to make an attack three. But I guess any card can be a generic move to take us to there. So I suppose this can actually be that. So if we do something like this instead. This gives us the flexibility then to pull him. I mean, so we can just use the bottom of skirmishing maneuver as a generic move too to go here and then pull him to here if they do end up summoning. This way, even though again with three attack threes we should kill this, um, it removes the risk of that because then we, if they summon, we just pull rock 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 and we're fine. And if they don't end up summoning, then we can still do range attack plus range attack. The downside is we lose two initiative and one experience, but I think the upside is worth it. That's a good call. All right, yep, there's the summon. Great, good call. So Spellweaver goes first. Um, we're going to... Hmm. We do have the Earth. We could consider just doing a heal five on the Cry Guard here. Instead of doing a, an attack three with disadvantage. I, we do a lot of healing then actually. We could actually do a heal eight on the Cry Guard. And give him strength, and all the strength and doesn't change anything. Yeah, I think that's actually better. I guess, yeah, I think I prefer to do eight healing rather than attack three with disadvantage. So what we'll actually do is we'll use elemental aid's top and mana bolt's bottom. So we'll consume the earth with elemental aid, which gives us one experience, and we do a heal five, range two, and then a heal three, range one, strengthen. So there's a total of eight healing, which we do all on the crag art, putting the crag art back up to twenty. Okay, and so then we're done. The Crycart goes, and the Crycart is going to use the top of Rock Slide, creating Earth, and gain one experience, and drop three rocks, and it's going to be Rock, Rock. Yeah, it has to be a rock here. Because then we go here, pull a mirror. Yep. So this takes two damage, as does the spell waiver. But obviously worth it to prevent them from summoning any skeletons. Okay. And then we have a generic move too on the bottom of Kinetic Assault. We are going to hammer a potion this back to get an extra turn. But we don't want to move anywhere, so we're just going to do like one, two. And get Kinetic Assault back with a charge of a hammer potion. Okay. Then the Brute is up, so the Brute's going to do the bottom of Skirmishing Maneuver as a generic move too, moving to here. Give me just a second, I just have to close my door, actually. Ah, okay, yep. my fiancé just arrived, she'll actually take care of it for me. Being the loving fiancé she is. Um, so now we're going to make an attack 3, range 3, pull 2, targeting Cultist number 5. Sorry, just had to get a kiss. All right, so here we go, plus two. So we got five damage on him, not bad. 18, and full tier. Beautiful. Good call, Isio. Was clever. Again, I just, I don't even think about the pull being on this attack. It's the first time it's actually come up, I think. Maybe because I don't think about it, but fair enough. All right, so then they each take two damage and summon nothing. Oh, and the strength is gone. So, time to set up Cold Fire for the following turn. Under the assumption that they're not going to summon again this turn, or under the hope that they're not going to summon again this turn. Um, the Krykart can do the typical Lulger Tornado Heaving Swing combo. Since we don't really want to move anyway, this puts us in a pretty good spot for that. Will we be able to skewer them? Actually, we can just leave and cleave both of them. That's quite good here. No reason to try to set up a skewer just yet. Just use the top here. And then I guess we can use the bottom of Spare Dagger. Since, again, we don't want to move. We want to keep them surrounded like this in case they flip summon. Because if they flip summon, there's no threat anyway. Um, and if they flip something other than summon, yeah, they're going to do some stuff. But they should still stay in the position they're in. This way we get an attack three on both of them. 
plus an attack 2 in one of them, plus an attack 3 curse in both of them. And this probably gets another attack 4. Yeah, overall this looks really good. It's a pretty obvious turn, I would say. Uh, it just makes more sense to get... I mean, by not using the bottom of Leaping Cleave at some point here, we're going to miss out on plus 1 damage on Skewer. But we're also getting a 2 target attack 3 here, which is an attack 6, which is as good as we can do. I mean, this is still really good. The top of Leaving Cleave is a good card. We just don't use it as often anymore since we have the Skewer set up with it. But in situations like this where we can hit both of them, it's great. And we actually get attack 8, like I said, because we can just use the bottom of Sparrow Dagger here as well. All right, let's go. Healing themselves. All right. And attacking. Kind of annoying stuff, but should be okay. So the Brute goes first. We're going to begin by using Leaving Cleave. Gain one experience. We do an attack 3 in both of them. We'll do regular and then elite. So each of these are attack 3s. All right, so one damage on the regular. Oh, and a stun on the elite. Two stuns on the elite and a three. All right, so one damage here. This is down to five. And then this one, it was just a plus zero. Yeah, so it takes three, but a stun, which is quite nice, actually. And then I guess we'll use the bottom spare dagger. Which one do we actually want to hit? Uh, it's impossible to... No, it's not impossible. If we get a plus three, we actually kill this one. <laughs> and we don't take any hits from it. I guess it's worth it. I mean, that's yeah, a one in 17 to get a plus three. And the crit doesn't do it. We don't have the disarm or the stuns anymore. Uh, do we care more about spreading damage? I guess we're going to skewer them maybe next turn. It's not even sure. We have cold fire. Yeah, we, we should spread damage. It's better. So we'll make our attack 2 a spare dagger targeting the elite. So the bottom of spare dagger is an attack 2 targeting the elite. Alright, 3. And down to 9. Alright, then the cultists go. The elite just loses its stun. And the regular attacks the brute. So it's an attack 3 curse. Alright. But these are player curses. So we've got two curses on the brute, two curses on the crack guard now. And it heals himself for one. Okay. Then next up is the Spellweaver. So we're going to make our attack 4 targeting the elite. Yeah, because he has more health. And again, we want to spread damage. Also, this allows us to move second rather than right away. So we'll make an attack 4 with Engulf targeting cultist number 5. Right, so puts him down to five, created a fire, and then we're going to use the bottom of Reviving Ether to create ice, and I think we're just going to move back to where we are. Um, it shouldn't matter so much because we should go before them next turn, and we're going to cold fire stun both of them. Uh, yeah, I guess the argument for moving, no, but, well, it's tough because we don't know what we're going to lose, right? If we knew for sure we would keep Mana Bolt, Cold Fire, and Reviving Ether, I guess it would make sense to come, stay here. But the problem is if, if we end up, like for example, losing Mana Bolt, we can't re-roll and risk getting in, re losing Reviving Ether. So in that case, we won't be able to go before their 10. So it would be better to be further away from them so that we don't cause them to death explode. Although I guess in that case, we can just move before attacking. Like we have to not move. So yeah, I suppose it still just makes sense to stay here. It makes it more flexible for us to heal an ally or something if we need to. I guess it makes us disadvantaged when we attack him. If we don't, if we want to not move. So I guess that's an argument for moving away. All right, let's just move away then. And create ice with the bottom of Reviving Ether. Then the Kragart goes. We're going to use the bottom of Heaving Swing to add plus one to all our range attacks. We're going to consume the Earth, gain one experience. So we, as usual, we get an attack three curse model. Target all of them. We'll do regular and then elite. One and then five. Okay, so four. And one of our curses. That's fine. These are our curses over here. Oh, crap! We were supposed to read something when we entered this room. Oh, no. Uh, okay. But it just affects the demons. Yeah, yeah. So, um, each altar has 4 plus C times L hit points. So, oof. C is 3, L is 6, so 80. So, each altar has 22 hit points. God, we're, ne we're just never going to have enough damage to kill the altars is the problem with this scenario. It takes us like four or five turns to do that much damage. Oh, you're right. Regular was disadvantaged. Good call. Flip one more. I mean, we missed anyway, but yeah, good catch. Thank you. Oh, no. So we... Yeah. All right. Oh, no. So it meant that we actually... We did nothing here, and we got a plus one here. So this one's actually to one. Good call. L is six, actually. I'll explain in a second. Um, so we've got metal here, metal here, and we give them two curses. All right, so that was the correct attacking. 
attacks because we had disadvantage attack first, right? Which flipped plus one and and curse, yeah. And then yeah, yeah I just forgot about the disadvantage. All right. Um. So the reason why L is six is because remember we're playing solo, so we have to in always increase the monsters and traps by one more than the scenario level. So even though we have this monster set to seven, this means the scenario level is actually only six. Which is why we've been getting less experience. Previously, we were playing with monsters at six. We were getting only experience and stuff for five. All right. Uh, so, like I said, C is three, L is six. So, 18 plus four is 22. So, 22 health on all these altars. God, that's going to be so much damage that we have to deal. That's crazy. It's 88 damage between all the altars. That's so much damage. Ah, uh, and we also did something stupid here because we wasted a charge of backup ammo. We gave him one more experience, but hit nothing. All right, anyway. Um, so, for each altar that isn't destroyed, regardless of whether it has been revealed, the maximum hit points and attack values of all demons is increased by 1, and their movement and range values are increased by 0.5 rounded up. Melee attacks do not increase in range. So we're going to have some tough demons to face. We have to kill all the altars still. Okay. So we're done. Short rest for the spell weaver. Okay. Please be gentle. Alright, that's fine. I mean, it's one of my better cards, but I didn't want to lose Mana Bolt to Oracle Fire quite badly here. Fortunately, now we're going to be kind of awkward, but eh, we'll figure it out. Alright, so very obvious turn here for us. Mana Bolt plus Cold Fire. So we'll kill the Elite and do some damage and stun the regular. So what do we want to do to the regular here? I guess some wolf phalanx is a reasonable attack. And then we can use, I guess we kind of want to keep this combo. I guess we can just use this to move, grab a coin or something afterwards. Uh, we're in the one who has to get the treasure, yes. All right, and for the cry card, it's definitely not a ranged attack, that much is for sure. I guess we don't really need to attack, do we? So we can go ahead and heal. Does anyone really need healing? No. And the Spellweaver does what she's healing herself. We've got a free Bless to give out, but I suppose we can just hang on to that. We can just prepare this as a, an insurance policy in, we, in case they fail to kill one of them. And I guess play the heal just as a Bless giver regardless. Which can also create an Earth, which allows us to get more movement in the future. Yeah, it seems fine. All right, let's go. And there's the death explode. So, well, they're going to be stunned, so they're not going to get it anyway. All right, Spellweaver begins. I guess if we can always get a heal from him, we don't... No, we want to strengthen ourselves, though. Yeah, we're going to heal up to three. Or heal up three with the bottom mana bolt, giving ourselves strengthened for two turns. And then we're going to use Cold Fire, consuming the ice and the fire, to get an attack three with advantage targeting both of them. We'll do one and then five in that order. Both advantage, attack three stuns. Okay, so four to the regular. And unsurprisingly, the elite is dead, and we create an ice. So this one's down to two, and stunned. And the elite dies. All right. And then the regular goes, but is stunned, so it does nothing. So it does not have death explode because it didn't activate. Then the brute goes, gonna make an attack four with the top of a mobile phalanx on the regular. All right. Heal Deem. Ah, we actually got it. We did it. We got a cultist. So we need how many? 20? Jeez. Alright. And then the brute has a generic move too. I don't know which door we want to go in next. I guess the spell river is just up here. We should pick up a coin though always. I guess we can make our way down this way. Sure. Let's figure out this one. It's not like we're just going to not pick up coins. So we do that with the bottom of Trample. And then the Kragart goes. And we're going to use the top of Rumbling Advance. Um, yeah, I think I most... Well, I guess Blesses for us are good because we've got Dynamo. But... I mean, the person who does the biggest attacks is the Brute. So maybe it is just best on the Brute. All right, yeah. Well, so we'll do a move two to here using the bottom of... I think Assault is a generic move two. 
And then we'll use the top of Rumbling Advance to create an Earth and do a heal four bless on the Brute. So no healing, but we toss him a bless. Help balance out those curses a little bit in that deck. And we end the round. All right. So Spellweaver wants to get a chest. But I guess not yet. We don't have much movement. Or we don't have useful actions is the issue. So I guess we want to use fire orbs in one of these rooms. Presumably. I'm not even sure we can. The problem is we're just going to be so pressed for longevity because of how much health these altars have. No, but still, this allows us to cold fire afterwards. We've lost two cards thus far. We'll be down to four cards afterwards. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth it or not, but regardless, I think it's fine to keep the option open. Otherwise, we're just going to do like a move heal for a turn, which is maybe okay. do like this plus this. All right. Or no, I guess this plus this so that we can create one element at least for cold fire and then use a potion to create the other. But we've already used both our potions. Hmm. Well, we can still create one element for cold fire, which is something at least. I don't know. No, I guess by doing this, we can create the earth for elemental aid without relying on the crag who may not be able to. So this works and it gives us more movement. But I guess for us to attack, we have to go into this room. Which is not really where our allies want to go. But I guess we've got to move four jump on him. So he can make it. With, well, let's see. One, two, three. Four. Even with the boots. Doesn't. That only gets half the room. But I think the enemies are clustered by the altar. Yeah, it's probably still worth trying, right? I guess the Spellweaver can always. No, because we, we just need to be attacking things. I don't remember which are in which room. If I did, obviously I would try to focus like these two rooms first and then do these two rooms last, but I don't know which are which. So we have an earth, so we can use Cataclysm for a big move and then this for a reasonable attack. I guess it's fine for him to go first, this works. Actually, so like this works, right? Because he still goes... No, we go first. Oops, just barely. Yeah, okay, so we need to go like this. All right, that's fine. Let's do it then. Six movement. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we should be able to hit stuff. All right, so we're going to use bottom of Cataclysm. Consume Earth. Get a move six. One, two, three, four. All right, so what's in this room? Flamed... Oh, my God. <laughs> that is absolutely the worst. That is the worst thing to start with. <sighs> All right. Stupid Spellweaver having to move up here, ruining it for everyone. God. So, these have nine health instead of the regular five. It's a pretty significant difference, I would say, for something with that amount of shield. And retaliate. That's just, that's crazily bad. Hurt yourselves with ice? No. Powerful attacks. And yeah, they're attacking for what? Nine each? Jeez. That's insane. All right. So we've got, well, we need to hit them. I mean, I don't think that's not an option. We're going to take a million damage from Retaliate. We're going to have to lose cards here? No, I guess the Brute will, will the Brute be able to hit? No, he won't. In the end. That's bad as well. I guess we can use the the earring to be able to hit. Oh, we've got the compass. Now we got the compass. Or the earring. If we use the earring, we can hit both of them with the axe. That actually might be worth it. Well, let's see. We'll see. We'll see. We can figure that out in a second. So let's do Craggart's turn first anyway. Um, so we did... Yeah, we don't... Actually, I guess we do want to go in further. 
because we need to hit the altar at some point anyway. Uh, so yeah, we'll go six to there using the bottom of Cataclysm, and then we use Massive Boulder to attack, gain one experience, one charge of backup ammo. I can stun one of them. It's probably worth doing. Should we attack the altar is the question. I think we just want to use the Piercing Bone and attack both of them. God, the, those curses in our deck can be catastrophic here. Their retaliate range is three, unfortunately, at level seven. Is it six, I think, which it changes, actually? No, it's literally at level seven that it changes, yeah. Unfortunately, at level seven, the retaliate range becomes three. So we no longer have that out. Yeah, I think I'm going to use the Piercing Bow and just pray to all that is holy to get not our curses. All right, so Piercing Bow, Power Potion, Stun Powder, blowing it all! And we'll use our Healing Potion after we're done. So we're going to hit both of them uh, with Massive Boulders. So each of these is an attack for the Norzel Shield. And we'll stun one of them. It doesn't really matter which one. I guess we'll stun number two. So it's two and then four. Please no curse, please no curse, please no curse. That's good. And then the other. Oh, thank God. Oh, getting no curses there was such a big deal. All right. So the first massive boulder was an attack four plus two. So we got a six. And then he'll take one from splash. And then the other one, it was an attack. Again, four plus one for the modifier plus one from splash. The so six total down to three. And the altar takes two damage from the splashes. Whew. That's such a big deal. All right, and then we take just a oh yeah, and the top one gets stunned. We take a casual eight retaliate, but then we'll use our healing potion. So we'll just end up taking five damage here. Yes, I did trigger the charge of backup ammo. That's how I was able to hit both of them because I was just doing massive boulder, which normally would just hit one target. And I I used the charge and gained the XP. All right. So now it's the Brute's turn. You've got to move four jump no matter what. One, two, three, four. We're using our boots no matter what. Five, six. So the only question we have to ask ourselves is whether we want to use the earring or whether we want to use the compass. Probably the the compass is better to use because the earring is not refreshing any of the other things. The earring would basically just be functioning as the boots. But if we use the earring, we could actually move to here. I did set their health correctly, right? It's plus one health for each, and they have five normally, yeah, so nine. If we use the earring, though, we can get one more movement, which allows us to go here and then axe both of them. I think that's too good to pass up. As much as this hurts to do. This is costing us a lot. But again, the flame demons are the most difficult thing. And the fact that we, we drew them as our first enemy of the four enemy types is really difficult for us. So yeah, we'll use the earring, refresh the boots, get two more movement. So we'll do something like tuck tuck. This gives us eight total movement with our thing here. We're going to use the axe with balanced measure, gaining one experience. This gives us a two target attack eight. Again, we got to pray to dodge these uh, these curses. So we'll do two and then four. Okay, two's dead. Whew. We did it, right? So each time is an attack eight. They have four shields. This means they take four damage. Yes, both of them are dead. We didn't actually need the sun powder in the end, but well, I see nine health flame demons, and uh, yeah, I freak out a little bit. So be it. I killed both of them. I'm not sure we we spent enough things, but we did it. All right. So the fruit's done. Flame demons are eliminated. That's all supposed to be in this room, right? Yeah. And then it's the Spellweaver's turn. So we're going to do a move for jump with Reviving Aether, creating any element. Create Earth. I don't know, there's already Earth. I mean, I guess we can create Wind. You can't really wound the altar, but it gives them plus one. It doesn't really change anything. I guess we can create Fire. That way we can use Cold Fire as an attack three if we need to. All right, anyway, we have one, two, three. Do we need to go in more than this? No, probably not. The Brute can move up and grab the coins since he's melee anyway. We'll just move to there. 
and then we create light with our attack, and we get, oh no, I guess because then we can go whenever we want next turn to heal. And we're going to be, no, I guess we have range two no matter what. Yeah. Okay, um, so we make an attack three with advantage because we saw strengthened from the previous time. Okay, now we create fire anyway, and we got an attack five, then a 15. And then we have no more strength then. Okay, that's the end of the round. So the brute is going to long rest, just because this scenario is going to be a marathon for sure. Getting our boots back is quite valuable, and long resting here is fine. We're just all we'll all basically be long resting as much as possible. So all we we're just going to heal the Kragheart, and the Kragheart is, I guess, going to do a bunch of melee attacks because we don't want to waste our last charge of backup ammo, which is fine as well. All right. So here we go. So the Kragheart goes first. We're going to do a move one attack with Sentient Growth. Or move two. Heal one of adjacent allies. Well, that does nothing. And then we do an attack one targeting all adjacent enemies. So we just get an attack one on the altar. Maybe draw a curse. Oh, one damage. And the 14. And then we're going to use the... Why does it keep getting so twisted? We're going to use the top of Earth and Claw just as a generic attack two targeting the altar as well. Yeah, well, it's not exactly what we're hoping to draw out. But. Then the Spellweaver goes. We're going to gain one experience, consume the Earth, and do a heal five on the Kragart. Kragart's actually not going to need the full five, but it just gives us one experience to do it, so why not? And we've got to move three with Fire Orbs. But I don't know that we need that. I think we're fine where we are. I guess we... And now we never had a chance to use the goggles here, really. Why is this green getting so tilted constantly? I don't know why. All right, anyway, long rest here. Again, just preserving uh, longevity as much as possible. Long resting while heading altars because we're just not under any pressure while, we, while that's happening. All right, better to choose the cards to lose and give our allies more, times, more time to hit. So one of the two shielded enemies is gone and we do still have a piercing bow on her. So is it okay to get rid of trample now? I think so. It's still just an attack five against them, best case. So at the same time, no, because like Spare Dagger we can use as a bottom attack once we get next to the altar. Okay. So Crackheart long rest as well. So the Brute. What is the play here? Let's look at top and bottom attacks. So this can be, well, I mean, this we want to do when we're next to it, because it gives us an additional attack once we're in melee. We could do, like, hmm. This can also be an additional attack, too, if we move up. It sucks that we actually lost our attack 5 to begin with. It's our highest damage. This is what it is. Um, I guess we want to save this for a move when we're leaving. This we don't really want to play so much, period. And we could do like attack two, attack two, attack two. This helps to draw out curses from our deck as well while doing six total. Otherwise, if we do attack three, attack three with range, this is six total as well, but I guess it's not as good. Better against a non-shielded enemy to get three attack twos than two attack threes. But also, if we want that to be an attack two, we need to move up to here. Which is worse. What if we just do the two range attacks now? But then I guess this is never going to be... I mean, I guess we could just do these two range attacks in the end. And then use this to move up to it at some point to attack. But if we're going to do that, maybe we should just do that first. And then give ourselves more flexibility. I don't know, it's kind of all the same. Uh, yeah, I guess then we can see if we actually even need to move up to it. Based on how much damage we deal. Sure. Alright, let's just do the two range attacks then. Also gives us two experience, which is not nothing. All right, so the other people are long resting, so let's go. So we gain two experience, we do two attack threes, both on the altar, both attack three range threes. <sighs> Wish I'd done all the attack twos. Well, I mean, I knew that this was kind of the case, but I didn't expect it to be that bad. Well, oh yeah, good call, thank you. You are asking for some gripenals. I guess you got them. So long rest. 
crushing boots. Uh, yeah, we're just getting rid of that at this point. We just need all the attacks we can get. Uh, so do we have anything on bottom that can deal damage? This can, which also draws out bad stuff, and this can be an a top attack. I think overall this is a fine combination to do. Right. Uh, definitely losing fire orbs. Uh, actually, not losing a heal. We're not going to need any healing again in the near future. Fire orbs is at least a move three. Okay. Um, and we've got, don't have the fire right now, but we can theoretically create it. Otherwise, this, well, I mean, it still makes sense to do this because we get two turns of advantage, which helps a lot with our attacks, and then do this as an attack three. And then, um, if we still need to attack the other turn, we can always just move up to it and do a generic attack two, or we can just do an attack one from range as we move away or something like that, depending on how much damage we've done to it. Uh, so what is the brute doing this turn? I guess the move up, attack, attack. Yeah, this makes sense. All right, let's go. So spell we were first, heals herself, just get strengthened for two turns, no healing. And then attacks with flashing burst, creating light. So an attack three advantage, targeting the altar. All right, four damage. Down to 10. Then the Brute goes, does a move four with hook and chain. We'll just move to here. We're going to lose one attack by doing this, but we get the coin, which is nice. And we also um, stay one closer to moving away. And then we do an attack one at the bottom here. Down to eight. And then we use the top of a mobile phalanx to make an attack four. Ooh, muddled the altar. Take that altar. Down to four. Okay, we're done. We're going to use the top of Kinetic Assault to make an attack four. All right, altar's down. And then we've got the bottom of Sentient Growth to do a move two. No point in Hammond of Potioning here. All right. End the round. All right, well, we broke one of the altars. We've still got a long way to go. That 22 health is just a bit extreme for our level of characters but we'll try our best uh so we really want to use cataclysm for a big move which means we need to create earth which is done using this our biggest move to go along with that rock slide could be good but in a straight line Ooh, one, two, three, four, five. yeah that actually works so we can do rock slide to move plus rumbling advance to create i guess yeah to create earth and then i guess we don't even need so much movement with cataclysm but we can still take it i think that's fine Okay, so then it's time to do one of our two moves. I guess the move that sets up the other thing makes more sense. This first, and then the following turn we can try to do these two things together, depending on where we end up. Spellweaver needs to use a hammer potion here. We can use this generic top. Um, yeah. Does this allow us to get cold fire back? And then next turn we can do this move plus cold fire as an attack. Yeah, that works. With at least one of the elements created. Okay. Let's go. So Cracker goes first. I'm gonna create Earth. Um, with Rumbling Advance, and I guess we'll give the bless to the spell weaver this time. And then we do a move six. This movement must be in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. And then, oops, uh, we just put things in the wrong places. Oh well, whatever. It'll deal with itself. Um, then next up is the Brute, who does a move four with the bottom of Leaping Cleave, creating a wind. One, two, three, four. We're not gonna make it to attack anything, I don't think, next turn, but we'll see. 
We have, yeah, we don't even have the earring to refresh stuff anymore. We do have the car or the compass though. So I guess there's that. And nothing with the top. No reason to Hamana. So then the Spellweaver does a move for jump. I guess creating fire is better. We just need damage at this point. More than we need health. We're all at full health. The sun is less valuable, I think. So move for jump, creating fire. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, we already created the fire. And then top is just generic action. We do nothing with, but we can this allows us to hammer a potion it back. So we get cold fire back. Getting us an extra turn. Return counts. That is the annoying thing about actually having them, had them in the wrong spot, I suppose. Oh yeah, we got one of them back. That's why. All right. So cataclysm for a big move. Massive boulder to hit some things, just like we did last time when we entered a room. Here, big move and attack. Can... No, the brute's better waiting for for allies to see where the stuff is. All right, and here, yeah, I mean, it's the only thing we can do. All right, this looks fine, let's go. So, crack art first, bottom of Cataclysm, consume earth, move six. One movement, this room has two regular earth demons, huh? Earth demons aren't the scariest things in the world, that's a lot of health. So, they have 22 normally, so 25. Which can hit very hard too, huh? Let's see what they do. Oh yeah, and they've got like bonus movement and everything as well, so they can always reach us. Ugh, that's scary. They're gonna start pounding on us. They have so it's plus health plus attack and then plus range and movement are halved. And it's rounded up, I believe. Yeah, rounded up. So these still have plus two movement and they've got plus three health, plus three attack. So that means they're attacking for seven each with the immobilizes. Can I see the wording on compass? <clears throat> yeah, of course. During your turn, force an enemy within range five to perform move to action with you controlling the action. Why was that? Out of curiosity. All right. Um, so we need one more movement no matter what. Yeah, better. I mean, I guess we wanted to go later with the brute, although it wouldn't change anything here. Thirty-five and forty. Two, three. Oh, you think you can use it in the middle of an attack? I guess you can use other items in the middle of an attack. So yeah, sure. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, anyway, uh, we create Earth, gain one XP, using up the last charge of backup ammo. Now we only wasted one charge of it. And we get an attack three, targeting both of the Earth Demons, one and then three in that order. Nothing special to use here. Yep. Okay. I'm drawing almost all the curses. So this one takes one damage, and then we got a plus one on the other one. Yeah, so four plus one from the cleave, so five damage, and then two damage to the altar. Okay, so then next up is the brute. So we have a move four jump. One, two, three, four. We have our boots, and we have the compass. So I think we will use both of them to just be able to hit one of these things here. This kind of sucks, though. But I think it's worth it. So one, two, three, four, five. Or, I mean, well, we'll use our boots. We've got one more movement left. So we can force one of these to move here. Oops. I guess it's better to wound the higher health one since it'll last for longer. So sure, we'll move this one too. Although at the same time, I guess we want to kill one of them as quickly as possible, to be honest. So sure, we'll move this one to here. And finish our movement to there. So now the only question we have is do we want to use skewer i mean the wind on skewer and i think the answer is no actually um it would give us plus one attack and that's it whereas leaving the wind actually gives us basically four healing as it's going to block four total attack from the enemies so yeah we'll just make our attack with skewer which gives us one experience and so is an attack three wound targeting earth demon number three 
Okay, so four damage and a wound. Ah, there was another advantage moving this one, which is that we keep them in the diamond as well. Yeah, that made sense. As well. Alright, and so a wound. Alright, then the spell we were starting, we have a move three with fire orbs. One, two, three to there. We don't still have strength then, do we? No. No, we had it there and then the last turn. Yep. Do we shuffle our deck after the blast? Not sure. We will now. Um, we should definitely use our goggles here. Two targets is good enough. So we're going to use cold fire, consuming fire, to do an attack three. Potion as well. No, better save the potion for a wind demon. That'll be the last running thing. So we will use our goggles, however. So this gives us an attack three advantage, targeting both of the demons. We'll do three and then one closest to furthest. Okay, so three damage on the front one and four damage on the back one. Okay, and then the earth demons go. So one, two, one, two, yep, to here because lower initiative. Now, the Kygart doesn't love this. He's about to get hammered. So, normally, like I said, their attacks are four, except here they get plus three because of the altars, so they have attack seven, although they consume the wind to actually just do attack five. So we get two attack fives on the Kygart. Six, yeah, I mean, we'll take it. And immobilize as well. Come on, give us one of those curses. No, four. How many curses are in their deck? Four? Mm hmm. Okay, and we're mobilized. No, we're going to go for our combo. Oops. And hope not to die. Uh, well, no much, no long resting here, unfortunately. This is a little bit too difficult. Uh, yeah, it's a move four, but I don't know that re-rolling it is worth it. We really want to keep Skewer just to have maximum damage at this point. Short rest here as well. That's fine. So, what can we do to actually prevent the Kragar from dying. Well, I guess if only one of them attacks him, he shouldn't die. So the Brute just has to go earlier. It's not too difficult with the Kragar going at 57. Um, I guess skewering them is not really the end-all be-all, because one of them's already wounded. It does hit both of them, though. He gets the wound on the other one sooner. Is it better to do that? No, I think it's actually still better to use actually a mobile phalanx plus skirmishing maneuver here, and then I can skewer the following turn. Maybe just never skewer? I don't know. At the same time, the sooner we get wound on this, the more damage it's going to deal. It's going to deal like three or four damage then, I think, that wound. So we missed one damage. All right, let, let's see what our total amount of turn, I mean, our, our combined turn should be. So let's say if we use a mobile phalanx plus skirmishing maneuver here, then the following turn, what? We could even do fatal advance plus leaving cleave, which is not bad, actually, to hit both of them. And then we do like one turn with skewer. So if we're gonna skewer any at some point anyway, yeah, we should actually just move and skewer first, and then we can always do the mobile phalanx the following turn. All right, looks good. So which one do we want to do? I guess this is fine because we do have to move to skewer, so we can't use the bottom of spare dagger. Whereas we might be able to use that at some point in the future, depending on what happens. All right, the spell weaver. Well, we need to create an element. There's an earth to use, but the Kragar actually wants that. So I guess we're just doing... I mean, we need to create an element, no matter what, with this to be able to use Cold Fire next turn. Although, do we want to save this for when we use Cold Fire? Should we hop up and do a generic attack? <laughs> I guess so. I guess that's, that's our life now. We could use... We may even want to use fireworks. We'll see. We'll see what we're gonna, which we're gonna do. I guess then we would regret having used 
the eagle eye goggles there. We'll see. We shall see. Ah, they're going to create an element for us. All right, standard turns. So the brute goes first. Generic move to here. With the bottom of balance measure. Then we use skewer, gain one experience, and we do an attack three, targeting both the enemies. Attack three wound, targeting both the enemies. We'll do three and then one. Do we want a Hamana? Yes, we have an odd number of cards in our hands, so we actually do want a Hamana. Is this the thing we want a Hamana? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's not like we're getting something else. All right, so we'll use the Hamana to get back balance measure. So anyway, attack three, targeting three, and then one. Ooh, okay. All right. So we doubled this, putting him down to six. And here we just got zero, so 17. I'm going to put a wound on him. The annoying thing is we're actually going to maybe kill the one that would attack the brute. So the cracker is still going to get pummeled. But the attack shouldn't kill. No, it literally can't kill. Because he has 10 health and it's an attack 7. And we have the helmet, so crits don't work. But still, going down to 1 life isn't really where I'm going to be at. We got rid of our heals. Well, I mean, we got rid of most of our cards at this point. All right. Um, so that's the or the brute's turn. Cracker up next. Disadvantage. Oh, we're immobilized no matter what. It doesn't change anything. All right, we're going to use Heaving Swing to gain plus one on all our attacks. We're going to consume the Earth, gaining one experience, making, again, a Dirt Tornado attack of three Curse Muddle Disadvantage, charging both of them. We'll do one and then three in that order. Paint. Well, okay, okay. So five damage here. That's a really nice flip, to be honest. Muddle, and we'll give the curse in a second. And then number three. Wow. Okay, those are some nice disadvantage flips for sure. So two damage. I mean, four damage going down to two. Because, again, our attack was for three. We got that. And they get two curses, which hopefully can keep us alive. That with the muddle. All right. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we weren't going to kill it because the spell weaver actually goes after. Mm. All right. So they each take one damage from their wounds. Down to 11. Down to 1. So this one will die before it goes again. They create Earth. And they each make attack 7 immobilizes. Number 1 will attack the Krygart because of adjacency. Number 3 will attack the Brute because of adjacency and initiative. So attack 7 on the Krygart and then attack 7 on the Brute. Alright, well, I'll take it. And three. And then on the brute. Oh no, they're muddled. Okay, well, it's the same. And then on the brute. Jeez, where are all those curses? Alright. So we've got block one here, block one here, because we're in a long rest at some point anyway. And we take four. And the brute is also immobilized. Ah, this was the downside of this this line. But we do have we do have double range next turn. Alright, so we're okay. We're okay. I forgot about the immobilize, so I wasn't paying enough attention. Could have been silly. All right, then we have the Spellweaver who goes, who has a move four with Reviving Ether, creating an element. I guess at this point I'm going to create Ice. Stunning it is actually maybe more valuable, because I really don't want it attacking again next turn. So I'm going to go one, two to here. I want to stay next to the Krykart, because I'll actually use the bottom of Mana Bolt to heal the Krykart, since he's at, well, three health. And I need to be next to this anyway to make my generic attack. So yeah, because I'm definitely not using fire orbs here. So I'll make a generic attack too at the top of fire orbs, attacking the uh, earth demon adjacent to me. All right, so two damage. Every little bit counts. And then we're done. So the question is, can we long rest? It dies not. It dies this coming turn, correct? You mean so three is actually the one that dies. One is the one that has. So with two attacks from the brute, theoretically it should go down to three life, maybe slightly lower. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Um, the thing is, I would actually like to. Uh, have the Krykart long rest. I basically want to long rest any chance I can, and 
again, long resting here will also recover two life for me. Um, basically, so the Krygard, the Brute doing two attack threes on this puts this down to three. And if I stun it, it's basically dead, right? If I make an attack one stun, this just kills it because this makes the wound deal two damage before it ever goes. So I don't need the Krygard to actually attack it. Um, admittedly, the downside is it is a disadvantaged attack. So... But the Brute can also get, you know, a plus one on one of his two attacks. And even if I don't, it still gives me another turn then to make one one other attack on it. The taking fire instead of ice would have been more valuable. Because, again, I don't actually need the stun if I just end up killing it. But the stun is safer because it makes it so there's just basically no way that it attacks. Yeah, if the Krager doesn't long rest, it is a little bit different, but um, even then, like, I would still, like, it would be more valuable than to have the Krager attacking the altar most of the time anyway. And also, in that case, the stun, I think, still makes more sense. I guess he can't attack the altar because he's immobilized. Yeah, well, I mean, he could also heal himself. I don't know. I think no matter what, the stun is just safer, even if he's not long resting, I think, because he does stuff. Have... I'm not sure if he's the one with one curse in his deck. Yeah. I mean, I guess he could still do a bottom attack. I don't know. Anyway. The problem is the Spellweaver only does three damage to the altar, whereas the stun, it like... Stunning a wound target does two damage, no matter what, and um, prevents an attack. I mean, theoretically, prevent, potentially prevents an attack if it doesn't die, right? Whereas, so, like, I'm... This way I would be missing two damage on the altar, but I would be gaining, like, not having to worry about this at all before it dies, which again would allow me the flexibility potentially of having the Krakart use a heal this turn, which I guess doesn't change much. I can always have him heal on moving, but again, it, it does allow me to long rest, which I consider to be absolutely worthwhile because I just, every bit of additional longevity for every character matters. All right, let's go. So spell we were first, we're going to use mana bolt to do a heal three on the Krakart. The downside here is we're gonna have disadvantage, but like I said, it, it shouldn't matter so much. And then we're going to use Cold Fire, Consuming Ice, to make an attack one disadvantaged against um, Earth Demon number one, which also stuns. All right, so it does two damage. So yeah, he should definitely die. And we put stun on him. Then the Brute goes. We're going to gain, well, I will do Spare Dagger first. We're going to gain one experience, make an attack three with Spare Dagger, targeting the stunned Earth Demon. Uh, I didn't want that. I guess we're in range to attack the altar, so that's actually okay. All right, so our three becomes a six, so this goes down to one. And then, yeah, we can use our bottom range three attack from Skirmishing Maneuver to attack the altar. So attack three on the altar. And we lose our immobilize, and the Krager will also lose the immobilize. I need long rest, so let's get rid of those now. All right, then the Earth Demons go. They each have one life, and they each die from their wounds. Hmm. So long rest on the Krygart. What are we going to lose? Probably, I guess, sentient, sentient Growth or Heating Swing, I think, always. But I guess Heating Swing still sets up some reasonable attacks. So I guess we can get rid of Sentient Growth. Although it is an attack one on bottom against the altar. Yeah, I guess it's just an attack one on bottom. I guess that's probably slightly more valuable at this point than Heating Swing. I mean, Heating Swing adds one to a ranged attack, but we have to not move, which I think is worse. Okay, so I guess we do this plus this for an attack four, and then we have an attack four the following turn as well, where we create a win for the turn after, just in case. All right, that works. Spellweaver is long resting. Crackheart. Uh, I guess doing a range attack this turn. Moving up a tiny bit. 
so I guess range tech should be massive boulder. So I guess we want to go after. Makes sense. What are we using to move here? Cataclysm is good for afterwards. I guess we don't need to, but then we can't go after. Then we deal one damage to the brute. I guess it doesn't matter. The brute's always going to, oh no, but he's missing health. So the long rest actually already heals some relevant damage. Yeah, I want to keep Cataclysm to move towards the next room. I think that's pretty important, actually. I can use Sentient Growth plus Kinetic Assault to make it there. It just sucks because then Sentient Growth isn't going to get the one attack. But I guess it can still heal the Brute for one, which is okay. Although if the Brute's already there... Oh no, we can use our Boots because we're gonna long... we'll are gonna we be able to long rest again. So that's fine, actually. Yeah, so Sentient Growth plus Kinetic Assault this turn actually works. Okay. So it doesn't really matter. There are no enemies. Okay, so, oh no, it's like this, because <laughs> we need the brute to be next to the altar, so he gets the one heal. I mean, there's there are no enemies, so there's no new information. This is very clear that I would do it in this order. Just wasn't paying enough attention. All right, so the brute goes first, doesn't move for jump. Uh, like one, two, three, four. Yeah, because he can move there. Yep, sure. And then we use the top of balance measure, gain one experience, and make an attack four on the altar. Let's go down here. Five. Fourteen. Okay. And then the Krarar goes, uses the bottom ascending growth with boots to do a move three, healing one on the brute and making an attack one on the altar. Alright, no damage. And then we use kinetic assault to make an attack four on the altar. Jeez. This is not how we're going to get through this scenario. And then we have a long rest on the Spellweaver. Which refreshes the goggles and allows us to choose what to lose. Um, I mean, we always need to keep this. We don't have elements now, but they can make an element for us easily enough. Guess this can be an attack three, whereas this can't. We only need one move, big move at this point anyway. All right, we'll lose fire orbs. Okay, so massive boulder plus step back, I guess. And then maybe we can move in a straight line. Is that even possible? No, not really. So cataclysm really needs to be a thing. It's just we need to go earlier than the Spellweaver to create an element. But I guess we can just go like this. And the Spellweaver can go after. Not after the cry card, so it would have to be the Brute's element, which the wind matters. But I guess we're in a long rest, so the wind doesn't actually matter that much. All right, so this is fine. And so then the cry card, I guess it's going to have to deal one damage to the Brute if we attack with Massive Boulder. So is it better to just heal? No, because we do need the damage. One damage to the Brute is fine. It's not going to be that, which determines the scenario, I think. So then, Dirt Tornado to move, I suppose. Yeah, because we'll only have one move after that anyway. We won't need to attack it again. Okay. Let's go. Spell Weaver first. So we're going to use Cold Fire as a generic. Oh, crap. No, not Spell Weaver first. Yeah, yeah obviously. Brute first. So we're going to use the bottom of Leaping Cleave to just jump around but end up exactly where we are. Creating wind, and then we're going to make an attack four with the mobile phalanx on the altar. Well, that was the last curse, but jeez. I can't believe we've drawn every single one of them. That's quite an accomplishment. Especially on the brute, who doesn't even have advantage that much. All right. Well, that sucked. So now the spellweaver is going to do a generic move two with the bottom of cold fire. Moving to here. Grab this coin. And then we're going to use the top of Mana Bolt to consume the air which is created, gaining one experience, and make an attack three against the altar. Um, whether we use the goggles this turn or next turn doesn't really change anything, so we'll just use them now. So we'll gain advantage on our attack three against the altar. Well, it wasn't just supposed to be this turn. Oh well. It's good to get a crit. Six damage, down to five. Okay, and we're going to use a uh, Hammond Potion Charge. Oops, no, not this. This to recover Cold Fire, which we use as a generic move so that we can attack the following turn. Or so that we can have a turn the following turn, basically. All right, 
then the crack heart's up. We're going to use Massive Boulder, creating an Earth, make an attack three. Oh, no, sorry. First, we're going to use Dirt Tornado as a move three, going to the coin. Because I think the one movement isn't going to change that much. One, two, three, four, six. Yeah, it shouldn't really change anything, I think. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah, I think... Oh, yeah, we have... No, because if we went... Yeah, I know we have to stay here anyway, so we're in range. So, yeah, we're moved to there with uh, the bottom of Dirt Tornado. I guess that means we can use it as a generic move. Yeah, we'll use it as a generic move two instead, Dirt Tornado, so that we can Hammond Potion it back. Giving ourselves an extra turn, and we'll use Massive Boulder as an attack three, which does one damage to the Brute because of the Splash. So attack three on the altar. Oh, jeez. One life left. Well, I guess that allows the Cold Fire to potentially kill it. And then that's the end of the round. So we're going to do a giant move with Cataclysm as well as use Rumbling Advance to heal ourselves. That Earth. Spellweaver is going to move and shoot. Oops. The earlier initiative, the better. And the Brute is going to take a long rest. As he gets back his boots and his shield. Both of these matter quite a bit. Well, and the shield not so much. Also gains some health, but... Uh, oh yeah, we did one damage because he's 16 because we healed him one. All right. Well, the Spellweaver better kill it with her attack one, I guess. I guess otherwise the Brute just kills it the following turn. All right. Krakar goes first. He's going to heal himself. Creating a new earth with Rumbling Advance. So we heal for four. He's now given a Bless to everyone. Shuffling a Bless into his deck. We're going to consume the old earth with Cataclysm to do a move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you mean I could have attacked it and moved away with the brute? Uh, yeah, it's a fair point. But the ideally, or theoretically, we would have needed. I mean, the only reason we ended up killing it one turn sooner than we should have. Like, it should have taken another turn of at least the Brute attacking, because we got a crit with the Spellweaver. Admittedly, we got a miss with the... No, yeah, I guess we got a miss with the Brute. So if we hadn't done that, yeah, it would have been better in the end, I suppose. If we had attacked and then moved away. Yeah, it would have evened out to the same thing. I don't know why I thought that I needed to stay next to it. I guess I, I thought that I needed more damage than I actually did. I wasn't paying attention to how much health it actually had left. Okay, so he's done. Use Cold Fire as an attack one against the altar. Well, I mean, the Brute gets to kill it anyway. In the end, it works out because of this plus the, the miss. With the Brute's miss plus our minus two here. Because if we'd gotten this, then it also wouldn't have made sense for him to be there. But in the end, we do need it. All right, then we do a move four jump with Reviving Ether. One, two, three, four. Moving to here. What element do we want? Well, we're long resting. So I guess we'll create a win because the Brute can use that. Heal to refresh this, refresh this. Going to lose another card. But things are getting slimmer and slimmer. I guess something like Spare Dagger doesn't matter so much anymore. We're having no, no, we still gotta fa face Frost Demons. I guess like a mobile phalanx doesn't matter that much anymore. It's still an attack four, but we need all our biggest moves basically. And this is actually a top attack which can move, otherwise this might be the best to get rid of. So yeah, we're gonna use this here, presumably to kill the altar and then move away. Because we can do attack two, move two. In the worst case scenario, we have another attack two as insurance. And I guess we create win this turn, and then we can use it the following turn. No, better to do this, this turn, then the following turn we do create win plus balance measure, and then the next turn, yeah. Alright. Maybe a little move plus skewer or something like that. So we'll use this to move. Long rest for the Spellweaver. Cracker, move into the room, drop some rocks to draw the enemies towards us. Although drawing the enemies towards us doesn't actually help much, but it's also just about turn efficiency, I think. So Brute goes first. Top of Skirmishing Maneuver, make an attack two on the altar. All right, so the altar does die, finally. Then we have a move two, and then another attack two, which does nothing. And then we have a move four with Fatal Advance. 
one, two, three, four. Okay, and the Krygard has the bottom of Dirt Tornado as a move three. One, two, opening the door. So in this room we have one regular Frost Demon. What did I do with the Frost Demons? What? Hmm. Who knows? Not so important. All right. So he has only bonus two health, bonus two attack, bonus one movement. Where did the Krakart start? It was here. Yeah. So we have one movement left. So 16 health. Let's see what they're up to. That thing, huh? Minus one movement, but plus one. So he's at three movement. This makes... No, we can't ever do it like that. Oh, that's annoying. Because we need to hit the altar. I guess we can go like this, this. If we step back. Maybe we don't hit the altar. See if we step back and we go something like one, two. His three, uh, his three movements. What if we're here? One, two, three. Yeah, he makes it here. Is there any way we can hit the altar and prevent him from attacking us? I don't think so. Because to hit the altar, we have to go to one of these two spots. From here, we can, but we can't ever go like this. Is the problem. Can't place here either. Just this, he still has three. No, I think it's not possible for to stop him from hitting us and hit the altar. I think not taking an attack seven is probably better than uh, getting two damage on the altar. So does that mean we want to stay further up? Place like this. Now this is just be more annoying for us to get the altar, I suppose. So we'll just go further back and place rocks. Uh, we do not have boots, no, because we need to long rest. Is there an extra altar over there? So, rock here, rock here. And I guess we'll just play a throw, place a throw or rock. Up here. So, it takes two damage. Did we gain our experience? We did not. And then create a new earth. Frost Demon goes. Minus one move, plus one move because of the altar. One, two, three to there. Okay, and long rest from the spell weaver. Refresh this, already at full health. Time to lose a card. Guess I'd rather have cold fire in my hand, so I'll lose this, and then I can play cold fire this turn alongside Reving Ether. Otherwise, we can play this if the Krakart moves next to us, but I think the Krakart's gonna long rest. Hmm. Should the Krakart long rest? Yeah, probably. Someone's getting hit anyway. The attack 7 is still fine. It can't kill him. He'll get health back and get his boots back. The boots are pretty significant. Otherwise, if he short rests, he can move next to us. Then we can give him a heal. We risk losing a card we really care about, though. I'm just afraid. My movement cards are so important. I have so few cards. Which matter. Yeah, I think I should just always long rest. I think that's correct. All right. Unfortunately, we established that a little bit too late. We did do a short rest with him. So, yeah, that means we will keep this because... No, otherwise we can actually strengthen the Brute. I guess strengthening the Brute is probably more valuable than getting one additional card back in hand. Cold Fire doesn't matter so much anymore. I mean, it kind of does, but not really that much. So yeah, actually, we'll choose to lose Cold Fire then. So we can play these two cards this turn. Since we have to play Reviving Ether's top no matter what, we can play the bottom of Mana Bolt to heal, which I guess does heal him for two, and give him Strengthen. Yeah, it's pretty valuable, I think. Worthwhile, certainly. So we're going to set up the Wind, and we're going to do a ranged attack, because this guy has well, three Retaliate. We're not all about that. Oops, you're there. Long rest. All right, let's go. Mm hmm so first the uh, spell weaver goes does a heal three strengthen on the brute so the brute goes up to full and gets strengthened 
And then we're going to use the top of Reviving Ether to recover all Lost Cards. I guess the difference is we would have had Mana Bolt in our hand, right? If we'd done it the other way. Not, not Cold Fire. That's why we do have Cold Fire in our hand. Oh yeah, you're right, there should be Ice. Oh yeah, this actually matters. Yeah, I forgot it last turn. Good call. I just wasn't paying enough attention. Okay, um, so he mobilizes everything with range 2, which immobilizes the Cry card. This doesn't matter at all because the Cry card's long resting. Fortunately, he also heals himself. Back up to 16. <clears throat> Stupid value ice. Assuming ice. Then the Brute goes. We're going to do move 4, creating wind. Move 4, jump, creating wind. 2, 3, 4. We're going to go to here so we can skewer him. Impunity next turn. And then we're going to use Spare Dagger, gain one experience, and make an attack three with advantage, targeting the Frost Demon. Okay. Well, that's nice. So he stuns. So we don't need to worry about him. We do four damage to him. He's down to 12. And then we get the Long Rest here. Two health. Choose a card to lose. this point, Sentient Growth and Dirt Tornado are both pretty meh. But we've got a, I mean, this can be a big movement, which is primarily what it is. This can be a big movement. This movement matters less, I think, so I think I'd rather get rid of this, where Sentient Growth, again, is just an attack one on bottom, which is some amount of damage. I mean, that still adds one, one extra damage per rest against the altar. All right, so we're skewering him, and then hopefully doing a bunch of damage and moving with that. I guess we can't really move. Well, that's fine. What is the Crycart doing? Massive Boulder. And then... Not really anything with the bottom, right? He's going to have too much health, I think, to kill him. We want to save... Do we need to save Rumbling Advance as a heal at this point? He had 12 health. Does it matter? Not sure it does so much. Moving up and dealing one damage is probably more valuable. So let's do that. And the Spell has a ton of stuff to do again, finally. So we kind of want to move to here and make a range attack on him, I guess. This is a more valuable range attack. Uh, just one second, sorry. Okay, uh, sorry, one second. All right, sorry about that. Just figuring out dinner with my fiance. Uh, so yeah, we the mobilize late. No, we're gonna move next to him anyway. Yeah, let's just use engulf as an attack four, and I guess fire orbs is a move three. All right, let's go. So, Kragger at first. Create Earth, make an attack three, range three, which does some splash, so that doesn't matter. It's just an attack three. Okay, that's not bad. I'll take that. Rather it against the altar, but it's fine here as well. Down to six. And then we're going to use the bottom of Rumbling Advance. And we'll move, I guess, to here. This allows us to make range attacks to there if we want to. Which does one direct damage to the Frost Demon. Down to five. Uh, in the end, the Spellbird is not going to hit anything. So we won't have range. It's a little annoying. Oh well. So then the Brute is going to consume wind, gain one experience, making an attack four wound with Skewer, targeting. Oh, we don't have this anymore. Targeting the Frost Demon, which is five health. Be nice to get a plus one here, then we can actually move. Ah, uh, what a shame. All right, so down to one, and wounded. We have an odd number of cards now, so Hamonang here doesn't matter. He's the only one with Hamonang left, too. So we can make an, a move four here with Balanced Measure, but unfortunately he's blocking our path, so we can't really go anywhere. Which is kind of annoying. One health, too. That's rough. Oh, well. Um, well I'm going to move up to here. Next up is the Spellweaver, going to do a move three with 
fire orbs to three. And we're going to attack with Pingolf. Because, yeah, creating fire. I guess we can draw the blast. No, I think we've already drawn the blast. Yeah. Attack on it. Oh, I was so wrong. Yeah. That sucks. We didn't have the overkill thing, did we? No, we have to loot the treasure. Oh, that's that is definitely feels bad. Yeah, if I was sure that we had the bless in there, I might not have attacked. At the same time, creating fire allows me to make one more attack three. This is actually significant. I guess not so much. It gives me more flexibility. By having fire, I can use this to attack from further away and then still use this for movement, since this is actually my only big movement left. Otherwise, if I hadn't created fire, then I would have to use these two to attack, which would mean I would just be doing generic move twos each time, which is a bit worse. So there was a real justification for creating the, making the attack to create the fire. All right. You're eliminated. End of the round. We never got to use our boots either, huh? It's unfortunate, but we will still long rest. It's always long rest, like I said. So Krakart does have his boots, so we can use this to go attack, plus this is before. I think this makes sense. Uh, it's an interesting concept, but I don't think it's necessary. I think I have enough, lo enough longevity that I don't need to try to drop the summon. The summon still takes a long time to kill this, right? Does doing around 2, I guess we're like 2.5 damage per turn. You're still looking at 9 turns, basically. I guess, I mean, a little bit less if we go in an attack. I prefer, I think, just to spend a couple turns attacking it with everyone, slash long resting. I don't think it's necessary. We'll take a look. We'll see what happens here. But... I don't so much want to play a Lost card, especially at 7 cards here, to lose an extra turn. It seems quite costly. I think I have the margin here to not have to do that. Alright, anyway, we created the fire so we can use Cold Fire. We can move up to here, which allows us to save our move 4. And then we can go to the chest the following turn. Yeah, it seems good. So, this is a generic move 2. Long rest there. Alright, let's go. So, first up is the crack heart. We do a move two, plus use our boots. So, we give him four. One, two, three. Make him attack one on the altar. Two damage. Set to 20. And then we use kinetic assault to make him attack four on the altar. Set to 15. <sighs> All right. Then the Spellweaver goes, generic move two on the bottom of Elemental Aid. We'll grab this coin. Like I said, we still have the perfect line. I guess I'd rather use the save the goggles for the attack four rather than this attack three. So we'll consume fire with cold fire to make an attack three on the altar. Okay, three damage down to 12. Round. Long rest here doesn't recover anything. Just gets an additional turn by having, by virtue of having long rested. So we're not in range to make an attack from where we are now. We can move a little bit, and make a ranged attack though, or start going towards the next room. Crackers always playing these two cards. This doesn't really matter. Spell Weaver is always playing these two cards. So this is looking at a total of six damage from the two of them. So now we do need the, the Brute's damage here. If only we were one closer. If we just killed that Frost Demon with our plus one, we would have been in a much better spot here because then we would have already been able to be close enough that we could just do two attacks on it here. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess balance measure is a big attack. Makes sense. We'll long rest afterwards anyway. Don't think we need to do the wind creating one. Although I guess it doesn't change anything. Then it gives us the flexibility of using skewer afterwards. Which is maybe fine. Sure. This way we should kill it this turn, I think. And we can start moving towards the next. All right, here we go. Let's just double check something. Oh, we had a tie, funny. 
brute or crack artist first. Um, I'm just gonna punch it. I'm not gonna bother with creating. I'm gonna long rest next turn anyway, and the obstacles will actually just get in the way. And I guess do they really? I guess not so much. All right, sure. Let's create Earth, gain one experience by creating obstacles with a rock slide to get. Oh no, because I guess the other way. No, 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 no. The other way we get a modifier though, so we have. I mean, it's more likely to be an attack three than an attack two. So let's let's just attack it. I don't care that much about one experience. I do want to beat this scenario. Oh, you're right. I didn't lose the card. That's what I was deciding. Good catch. Thank you. Um, so what was the card that I actually want to lose? I guess it's a spare dagger at this point. Yeah, as was originally planned. Okay, so thank you. I got so distracted because I was trying to figure out what the other people were doing to help decide which card I need to lose, but then once I decided what I was going to do, I lost sight of losing the card. So yeah, we'll make a generic attack two with the top of Rock Slide. Yep, so that was right. Down to nine. And then we'll use the bottom of Cataclysm as a move three. One, two, three to here. Then it's the Spellweaver's turn. So we'll use the top of Living Torch as an attack four on the altar. We'll use our goggles here. So six. We will take the fire, because why not? So the altar's down to three. Create a fire. And we'll do a move four with the bottom of Flashing Burst. One, two, three, four. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a trap, but. Oops, well, I should grab that one and put it down over here. 21. I've got to act like I don't know that it's a trap, right? Yep, suffer five damage. Thought so, but I guess it gave us a check mark. So, so be it. And we're going to long rest two of that five damage back. Now you can just not pick up chests anyway. All right, so then we have the Brute, who's going to do a move four. I guess we don't need to use our boots since it's not down to four health. Can Cragart finish it if the Brute doesn't go for it? It's too risky. If he gets a minus one or a miss, better just kill it. I think we'll be okay on the last room. So we'll do a move four jump with Leaping Cleave, creating wind. One, two, three, four to there. We use Balance Measure to gain one experience and make an attack four on the altar. All right, so the altar is dead. <sighs> Getting there. End of the round. So as much movement as we can possibly do. And then long rest, long rest. All right, let's go. So we've got... Um, how does it work? Yeah, we end up. Oh no, we've got the boots though. We'll give him a long rest afterwards. All right, so we'll do a move four with the bottom of Fatal Advance. Move four jump. One, two, three, four. And then we have attack two, which we don't do. Move two with the top of Skirmishing Maneuver. Plus we'll use our boots for this. So we get four movement total. One, two, three, four. We're not going to open the door yet. We're not that crazy. Okay, and then we're done. And these two take long rests. Refresh, heal, refresh, heal. So long rest for you. Choose a card to lose. Spell we've still got tons of longevity. So we've got wind demons in the last room. We have to keep this in mind. I guess we really don't care about this healing card at this point, to be perfectly honest. Oh, I guess if we spend a turn moving, it can actually be valuable. Mm, not really that valuable. Well, we're not using fire orbs. Actually, we might need the movement from that. No, we don't. We're close enough. Yeah, let's get rid of fire orbs. Okay, as for here. Time for sentient growth. Goodbye. Gonna go to go. Bye-bye. All right. It's annoying as we can't do our straight line movement. And we don't have the element for this. But it is what it is. We'll just move with this at this point. And heal. And 
she can heal as well. And I guess move with, just need to move next to the door. Uh, yeah, I think cold fire is not super tempting in this, in the immediate future in this room, I guess. We don't have our mana potions anymore. We can only create the fire. It can be two target. Yeah, I guess it can be two target attack three accordingly after this. But I guess we kind of, we don't know how much movement we'll need. Now nah, we'll just get rid of this for now. I think that's fine. All right, let's go. So, Craigart for, oh no, we need, we need her spot. Well, whatever. It is what it is now. Two, three, four, with massive boulder, and then we're gonna use rumbling advance to do a heal four on ourselves, and give ourselves a bless. And then here we're gonna use elemental aid to heal three on ourselves. We're not gonna gain the experience because we actually want to keep that earth. Oops, um, to be able to move more with cataclysm next turn. And we'll just do a generic move with bottom of cold fire, moving to there. We have no hammer of potion left. No. And long rest for the brute. Brush the boots. Choose which card to lose. Don't need this so much anymore. This was more just for top movement. At this point, I think we're going to try to do an execute in the last room. Because so far, every single room has had only regular enemies. So I think it's a reasonable expectation that this room should have only regular enemies. And being able to eliminate one of, them, one of the two immediately seems very valuable. Otherwise, worst case scenario, we also... Oh, I guess... The, no, because we do have to decide which one we're going to use. Maybe not. Yeah, I think we can actually get around this. So we can actually have the Cryheart go in first and drop rocks. So we can see. That way we... We know, because the problem is if we have to go in first is the Brute, and there are, I mean, and it doesn't work out that we can use, I mean, I guess this is so bad against the Wind Demons, though, but we don't really have anything, well, we've got Skewer, but I mean, we can also, yeah, this is so good. Even if there are two Wind Demons, it's still good. This is only bad against Elites, I guess. So, by doing this plus this, we should be able to kill one of the two, assuming there are now, there were, there were two flame two here, so it actually makes sense, not looking at this, that there's only going to be one one. But even if there are two here, we kill one of them immediately, and then we set up Skewer on the other one for the following turn, which is our best attack at this point against the Wind Demon. So this just seems ideal. And if there's an Elite, then it's pretty bad, but we're not really missing out on anything anyway. Then I guess we just attack the Altar with a generic attack two, which is a little bit worse than doing an attack three, but then we still set up the Wind to wound the Elite, which is the best we can do. And by having the Cracker go in first, at least we have the info. So this makes sense. All right. So as for the Spellweaver, it's move and attack. I don't know which one of these. I don't know which one of the elements we want to create. Probably fire. But anyway, we'll play this and we'll go after the cry card so we have more information as well. Okay. I guess it's important to remember that we also just have to kill the altar in this last room. We don't actually have to kill the wind demons. If there is an elite, we can always try to focus the altar. Which might make the Brutes turn a little bit worse, but again, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be regular. One or two regulars is what I'm expecting. It would be pretty vicious. Although, I think it does have a tendency to place those elites, but... Alright, we're going to use Cataclysm, Consuming the Earth to do a move six. One, two, three, onto the door, three movement left. Yeah, alright. Yeah, there are no... There's no possibility of having elites in any of these rooms. Alright, that's more reasonable. So, this goes here to flip for it. Why is this getting so twisted every time? All right, um, so three movement left. This has just plus one health. Yeah. My, the camera's really weird tonight. It's more tilted than usual. I don't know what's happened. All right, well, there we go. So yeah, there's just one in the altar, so this should be fine. Um, three movement left. One, two, three, I suppose. We're going to drop rocks at the top of Massive Boulder. Gain one experience. Create an earth. We'll do rock here. Oh no, we can't block that off completely. It's rock here. Rocking this doesn't matter at all. I guess like rock here. Sure. 
so we just get two damage on the altar. And then we're done, so then the Wind Demon goes, makes an attack plus one on us, so on an attack five, pull one, creating a wind on the Kragart. Where are those curses? Not that it really matters so much here. All right, so this was a five, so we take five, we're down to 13. And we get pulled to here. All right, then it's the Brute's turn. We're gonna do a move four jump with the bottom of Leaping Cleave. One, two, three to here. Well, we didn't want to place this here because this would make it, it wouldn't actually block it off completely, um, which I don't actually know if, I'm not sure if you're actually not allowed to block off obstacles completely, but I guess you're probably not allowed to block off any hex. But anyway, it, it would make it so there's only one adjacent hex next to the altar if we place this rock here, um, which is bad because we have two two characters who want to attack in melee. I mean, the Kragart's biggest attack at this point is in attack four. It makes it more difficult for both of them to get in an attack. It's better just to place it here. Getting two damage on the Wind Demon really doesn't matter at all whatsoever because we're executing it. So this, I, when I say block it off, I mean I don't want to, to place two obstacles next to it so that I won't have many spaces which in which I can attack the altar to do something which has no meaning. All right, so we gain two experience and we kill the wind demon. You're allowed to screw yourself over. Yeah, exactly. This is a loss, and we're done. Then the spellweaver goes. We have a move four. Two, three, four, I guess. Doesn't really matter how much we move in. Using the bottom flashing burst, then we use the top of engulf. We're just using the bigger attack fours because at this point the light effect doesn't actually matter. Adjacent damage doesn't matter. So in attack four, we can use the goggles and I guess the potion now, attacking the altar. So attack five, advantage attacking the altar. Nice. Create an ice, and R5 becomes a seven. Looks like we did it. Whew. All right, at this point we'll just short rest to make things a bit faster. Sure. That's a fair point. Just gonna blow everything on it. Gain all the experience now. All right, let's go. Muted. Reveal. Spellweavers first. Um, which of the elements matters? I guess we'll consume ice with the top of mana bolt. Gain one experience. Do an attack three range three targeting the altar. All right, three damage. Altar's down to ten. And then we'll gain two experience by summoning the Living Torch. Right here. Aha. That's active. Then the Kragart goes. We'll consume the Earth. Use Cataclysm to make an attack six, targeting the altar. Seven. Altar's down to three. And we'll... Oops, we didn't gain the experience for that, did we? No. Two experience there, and two experience just will play the bottom of Kinetic Assault, just like that. Okay, so these are both lost. Then the Brute goes, we'll use the bottom of Skewer to do a move six, plus our boots to get a move eight. Moving on to the coin. Ah. Do we care more about getting this coin? Just let them finish this off? Yeah, actually. Let's do that. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I guess we didn't need to use the boots, so so be it. Um, I guess we can skewer first then. Oh no, because that's ah, uh, we would have to get lucky with our attack. No, no, we'll just do this and as the bottom of skewer, we can give them one more turn. It's fine, and do nothing with the top balance measure. This way we get all the coins. It's actually, just better. Okay. We don't have anything where we. We'll need to not know that we've got this we didn't get and this we didn't get all right so brute does have two cards there we'll just do a long rest we could have uh ham and a potion oh, i didn't really change anything all right Kragart doing his things 
Spellweaver needs to short rest. Sure, doesn't really matter. There are no elements, but the... No. No, we have no really easy way to get an experience here. I guess we can, theoretically, by letting the car create earth first, and then we attack. Sure. This, and... I guess we want the Kragart to get the money. Alright, and we want to go after him. Okay. Oh, the summon's actually going to kill it. Anyway. Oh no, but then we get the sum summon's element, actually, so we can just go earlier. Sure. Alright, let's go. So, uh, summon goes first. I don't really mind if it kills it, if it kills it, if it kills it. Uh, makes an attack two, creating a fire, targeting the altar. Alright, didn't kill it. So, altar's down to one, and we have a fire. We're just going to use that fire right away with Mana Bolt. Gain one experience, making an attack three on the altar. All right, altar's dead. So then the Krakart's going to go. He's going to gain one experience by using Rock Slide, placing some rocks somewhere, and he's going to go on top of this coin and grab it with a generic move on bottom. Whew! I know I can discard the summon, but like I said, I, that's why I said I didn't care. If it kills it, it kills it. If it killed it, I would miss out on one experience, but... Mm. I was gonna. Get, I wasn't gonna bring the summon into the, this light into the world and never get a chance to shoot at anything. This would have just been cruel, and I would be paid back in the future the next time I summon it by it only missing or something like that. Whew, man, I'm hot in here. Hold on, I'm gonna turn off the heat. All right, we beat it. A reasonably difficult scenario on plus four. Not bad. So we've unlocked a bunch of stuff. Plane of Night and the Gloomhaven Battlements. So 31, 35, 36. No, it's just over here. All right, where's the plane of night again? Oh, yeah, it's up here. Okay. Nice, nice. Uh, we gotta check off Temple of Elements. Okay, Global Achievement Artifact Recovered. What is this? Is this that one? Mm -hmm. Why does it have that? I guess that's just a little it's just messed up. I guess it goes there. I don't remember exactly. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter so much. And that's it. <laughs> no reward, huh? Wow. That is. Yeah, you got the artifact back. Good job. Here's a pat on the back. No rewards. Really. <sighs> I hate that sometimes, really. You're right, we should go to work for Jexera. At least she pays. Completing a long, difficult scenario like that and getting bupkis. Straight nothing. All right. Well, we did it. The first time I've ever successfully completed a plus four scenario, actually. I've done plus three many times before, but never a plus four. Wasn't played optimally, but I think we played pretty well overall. Made a few mistakes here or there, but like I said, those will happen when we play three-handed. All those curses never used. All right. So the spellweaver got a check mark. She got a chest. And no one else did. Of course, I don't think I paid close enough attention to this, but I don't believe I got it. We're so close to actually getting only long rests for the 
brute too, but unfortunately, just a little bit earlier in the scenario with those cultists, didn't have the chance. All right, each coin's worth four, so this means the spell we got 12 gold. We have to 149. And we gained, ooh, a full seven experience. Okay. Plus, it is 14 again. Yes. No! 16! Oh, no, yeah, so we actually, no, those coins are worth, so we need three more gold there. Nice. We could have actually put Disarm on Mandible. I don't think we want to, though. We'll figure something out in a second. Um, yeah, because we were at 7, so the scenario level is 6, which means we gain 16 experience for the scenario, plus 7. This gives us a solid 23 experience. Still kind of far from a level. All right, we can clear that. Over here and here, there were no check marks, so we gain 20 gold here. Rolling in the gold. Okay. And for experience. Really? 33 experience? So we'll have to do our level up in a second. I'm just going to finish going through all these things. All right. Oh, and 33 experience here as well. even trying. So we gain a level as well, and we gain 25 gold. All right, so where does that leave us? I'm going to do these two levels, and then we I'm probably need to do an enhancement for the... Or look at enhancement possibilities for the Spellweaver. Consider our prosperity and stuff like that. All right. Um, which of these two things do we want more? Yeah, probably the Stun Powder in general. Depends on the scenario. If, if we think there are things that wound, we'd probably bring the Minor Healing Potion, but otherwise the Stun Powder. Over here, we get to buy another small item as well. So we can just do that real quick before we do the leveling up then. Now, technically, we should do the city event first, but I'll need to do that next time. Ah, well, whatever. We miss out on one gold. We miss out on one gold. Gregor's not that greedy, is he? Um, so what can we get for one more small item? Are there any things left, even? A major healing potion? It's kind of expensive. The moon earring just isn't good for us. We have only one spent thing. We could consider going into Eagle Eye Goggles now, but nah, it seems even worse to make the Tinker sell them now. We could buy uh, one of these. Woof. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess a major healing potion is fine. Let's buy it. We're never retiring. All right. So, major healing potion, which costs us uh, twenty-eight gold. Correct. We have a minus two. Yes. So we have three gold left. Spending like we've got a hole in our pocket. I'm gonna say I like to spend gold. All right. Let's do the level up. So, level 7. Level 7 gives us, well, I've talked about in this guide, but for anyone who hasn't read. Alright, so we've got two cards here. Brutal Momentum is not a bad card. So, attack 3, push 2. For each hex, you cannot push the target because of a wall or obstacle. The target suffers 2 damage, and you gain 1 experience. So, the nice thing about this is this can effectively be an attack 7 if you can set up a little concave um, that you can push people into. It requires more setup than Heaving Swing while having potentially more payoff. 
And the bottom bottom doesn't really do anything. It's just another copy of Heaving Swing as well. Because the fact that you consume Earth is mostly irrelevant. Since Dirt Tornado, which is the only thing you use Heaving Swing with anyway, can also consume Earth. It just gives you a little more flexibility with this card. But I mean, anyway, it's an upgraded Heaving Swing in a way. But Heaving Swing is still fine. I, you just don't need a second one that much. And this top is more difficult to use because you can so easily just push something into one obstacle. Whereas here you have to be sure not to be able to push it, which makes it much more difficult to set up, like I said. On the other hand, Meteor is just a really nice card for this class. Uh, the top loss is pretty poor, to be honest. But you've got Cataclysm for that anyway. The real mean, oh, sorry, bread and butter of this is that it gives you a move for jump, which we haven't had jump the entire time on the cry card. This gives us a lot of flexibility, gives us more mobility. And gives us 23 initiative, which is great. So even though Brutal Momentum is not a bad card, um, Meteor's bottom is just so good for us. Meaning that now everyone in our party has jump too, which means we can get over traps when we need to. Stuff like this, like trap walls, etc. So that's quite valuable. Um, so yeah, we took the Sunpowder for you. So Oh, and we got to do a perk as well. So like I said, I'm just going to take a plus one and mobilize. Even though I have strength in a lot. I mean, you saw some scenarios we can lose it early, unfortunately. And I still consider this just to be better. Even though it's not a great modifier overall. Let's do your modifier first. So here, we definitely want uh, to add two plus ones. It's better than anything else we can do at this point. It's significantly more consistent. And the add targets just aren't very realistic. And the plus one shield, we just don't have the initiative to actually make that very good. I'd rather have two plus ones. Okay. As for cards... Level 7, huh? It's interesting. I wonder if in this party, defensive tactics is tempting. Uh, we don't have blunt for or brute force, unfortunately. Ah, but defensive tactics as a range attack is actually interesting in this party, because we do kind of want range attacks, right? Quite a bit, in fact. It's a mediocre range attack, though. Hitting two targets for two as a level seven, but obviously it does involve CC, which is quite valuable. This is also free CC as a bottom move. Hmm. It's actually more difficult than normal. I mean, all right, so defensive tactics bottom is the only thing that's not really in consideration here. We, oh, in some scenarios, maybe. We don't have the thing which really makes it good, and honestly, playing it with enemies levels three higher than you. Just, you can't take that many hits anyway. Whether you have this or not doesn't change anything. Although on some scenarios against some annoying enemies like imps, I guess theoretically it can do something. Uh, we're already, the problem with this is it's not good against ranged enemies only, or summoners. It's only good against melee enemies. But honestly, we're already quite good against those. I guess this is kind of the same thing. This is, That's what this is also good against. But, uh, I mean, this is also just free. It doesn't require a top action, whereas this does. I think I'll try defensive tactics just for the top to see how it works in this party. I think it's interesting, I guess. I'm not sure if it's actually that good, but... I mean, this party really wants a ranged ally, and this lets us become even more ranged, so... I like the added flexibility it provides. And, I mean, it, it can theoretically be a two-target CC against some number of, en of rel relatively annoying enemies. Stuff like Night Demons, Frost Demons, stuff like that. So, yeah. All right, let's take defensive tactics and not look back. So, we're still far away from our enhancement, but the Spell Reverse, we can enhance Mana Volt. We can only enhance the top of it. Where is it? Here. We could put plus one range on the bottom uh, heal. We don't quite have enough money for that. Actually, I think we do. Plus one range is 30 gold, right? Yeah, we have 105. Oh, we have 152. Yeah, we could easily afford that. But at the same time, we almost always use it on ourselves, so doing that just doesn't really give much. I mean, we primarily want to use it on ourselves. No. In the end, I think it's we're just going to try to wait. So we would only need to get two more Prosperity and then be the last one to retire in order to be able to enhance a different card, just at retirement, which I think is just more valuable. 
I think I'd rather set up a future Spellweaver. Since this is the campaign I'll run for a long time now, since I only had to restart the previous campaign because of not having the VODs, I think, I mean, I'll end up doing some experimental stuff with this one, etc. So, yeah, I think I'd rather have maybe some more long-lasting enhancements rather than a pretty marginal enhancement. It doesn't help the party much now, but at least I can do now. So I'll just I'll just chill with my 152 gold there. And these eight cards the way they are. All right, so that's it. Not much else for today. We will be done. Uh, thank you, as usual, to everyone who tuned in. It was a pleasure. It was fun to get through a, uh, a plus four difficulty scenario tonight. And unfortunately, we're just going to be back to plus three in the future because we can't actually increase the difficulty anymore. But yeah, see you, Bulb. Um, anyway, I will be streaming, as usual, on Thursday at um, 4 p.m. C central european time i don't know which abbreviation is gmt plus one as usual and we'll also hopefully be streaming on sunday with uh themris depends on themris's schedule which will be the sunday stream will be for custom class testing and tomorrow we'll be trying to focus a little bit on getting towards wrapping up this party i mean we do need more money on the greg heart so we won't be doing a boss fight just yet i think we'll probably try to retire the Brute maybe next Monday and then retire the entire party by the end of next week. Um, but we will try to see if we can get some more check marks for the spell weaver. All right. Anyway, that's it. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much, and I hope to see hope to see you on Thursday. Sorry. Have a nice evening or afternoon or whatever it may be. Cheers. <laughs>